you get to hear the creak of my gooseneck on my microphone as I bring it down. I hope that wasn't too loud. Shouldn't have been. Apologies for the three minutes late. Welcome. How's everyone doing? I'm doing okay. Personally, I actually... When I started doing quarantine, I had no energy, like just in general. But now I'm feeling a lot better, actually. I'm like getting, I feel like I've been tired and it's been difficult for me to focus, but now I'm sort of getting that focus back and it feels good. It feels really good. Sh show you my gaming keyboard. FYI, if you're curious about what keyboard I have, it's a cooler master. I forget. I wonder if it's underneath it, maybe. Uh, quick fire rapid. That's what it's called. I actually, I didn't get it for gaming so much as I got it. Oh, turn mic up. Aha! You're right. Thank you very much. I didn't even think about. So, I need. I I needed to re-record a line last night. I realized uh, just really quickly, and so. I had it turned down for that because I can just boost it um, in post. And like that's sort of the ideal way of doing it. Because if you push it up beyond a certain point, it um, starts adding a whole bunch of noise. Uh, and the, it's just gain at that point. But I, I had to turn it down and then I forgot to turn it back up. <laughs> I turned it down so there wasn't any gain um, for the recording. Like just to record one, re record one extra little lime. I'm kind of proud. I don't think anyone's going to be able to tell that I had to re-record it. Uh, it took me a few tries because, you know, I had to get my... I realized I had to get my face just the right distance away. Um, and I had to uh, say it with just the kind of inflection that I was using that day. Because there are always little changes depending on the day. How's everyone doing? I had it turned down for what? I had it turned down for re-recording a little narration. Like I said, you know, all the narration is done and I'm just video editing, but I realized that I needed to re-record uh, just a, a, actually not even a whole line, just a part of a line. That was, that was kind of funny. Leon Fod, I love you too. <laughs> Fred, how does it feel to know an eldritch horror that chooses to take its form as Nick Nocturne? You should be asking them what it's like to hang out with someone who likes hanging out as a human. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and start making the tea. May as well just get the water heating. This time I've got a flowery oolong from Charities. Oh, hold on. That'll make things a little bit better. Be nice if I turned on the light, right? Check this out. Charities. Oh god, I, I can't frame it for hell. It's a flowery oolong. Um I'm usually not that into oolong. A lot of what I've got a lot of what I've got right now is oolong though, and I've been really enjoying the ones that I have. I have a few bags that I haven't opened of some really nice oolong. So let's hold on. Okay, yeah. Oh. Take it down to about 190. A dose of Buckley? Wait a minute. Like Tim Buckley? Does Tim Buckley have a podcast? <laughs> hey, Nick. Nick's in chat. Hey, man. Ark's here. Oh, this is my tablespoon. What am I doing? Where's my teaspoon? Ruh row. Well, I think I I moved it. What was I measuring with it? No, I got up and made different tea this morning. I specifically had tea that does not have a lot of caffeine. You know what? Since the teaspoon measure is gone, we'll just use two half teaspoons. 
That's about a teaspoon, right? <laughs> there we go. I like adding lots of leaves. I like lots of leaves. It just... I like flavorful tea. I like gentle teas, but flavorful teas. Any fruit teas I'd recommend? None off the top of my head, really. I just kind of grab it where I find it. Um, there's one shop that I like from my old college town that I occasionally go back to that has some really good uh, fruit teas. John Schultz, have I tried Lapsang Suchong? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really good. I'm actually out of it because I drank it all. How's everything looking? We good? Oh my god. I rinsed out the green tea yesterday and there's still a couple of tiny itty bitty leaves in here. Goodness gracious, that got everywhere. Today on adding basic fractions, approximately... <laughs> We'll get Nick in here in just a minute, don't worry. Why Zeggy, the spiffing Brit would love this stream right now? Fun fact, on one of the unlisted streams, he commented on it. <laughs> I was just like, wait a minute, what? Why is spiffing Brit, it's like, it makes perfect sense that the spiffing Brit would be there, but at the same time, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> I wonder if someone alerted him to the stream. What's led to this series to occur? It seemed like originally, okay, yeah. So the origin story is on Twitter. I was like, man, mukbangs are kind of weird and gross, aren't they? I like, I, I, I don't like them at all. I think they're kind of, I think they're disgusting. But that, that's personal. If you like them, that's fine. I just aggressively dislike them. Um, and I was like, you know what? What if I did a like an anti mukbang? where I make tea instead and there the camera's not on my face because who cares about the person's face just listen to them talk you, you don't want to like what are you going to get out of it you're going to see me sipping tea how about I just show you the making of the tea because I mean I guess that's something that this has over a, a mukbang right I can like I can actually show the process of making it And then I was like, you know what, with the quarantine that's going on, maybe it would be good to do it, to actually do it. And do it a little bit more than I was going to otherwise. Just something cozy. My face isn't a secret, by the way. It's it's not like I'm trying to hide my face. There are, there are videos on my main channel, on this channel, with my face in it. <laughs> What part of the world am I in? I'm Pacific Northwest. I like the rain. I do, I do rather like it. I really like the Pacific Coast. The cold, the cold Pacific Coast. Like, no Puget Sound, Newport. My family would visit Newport sometimes. That's a tiny town. It's like, Imagine, if you know Seaside, Oregon, imagine Seaside, Oregon, but less touristy. And just more like a real town. You know how sometimes there are towns that are just tourist towns, essentially? Trouble in tourist town. It's like that. How long should I steep this? I'm going to go 145. And then I'll check it out and see how well the leaves have unfurled. Okay, yeah, so check this out again. I should la um before, but see there... Whoops. Haha, uh, mirrored. You can see that they're sort of balled up. Um, that's how a lot of oolong tea is. It's balled up. But then as we continue to steep it, the leaves will unfurl. And it ends up filling up like half of the cup. It's really cool. Use Deadwing Dork's bong water for my tea. <laughs> bong water tea. If you like Seaside and Cannon Beach, go to Newport. Okay, nope, nope, there goes, there goes the stand for my water heater, for my kettle. Come back. Okay, hold on. You might see my face here. Oh no, I actually just shaved. 
because it was getting itchy. Uh, oh, oh, no. I don't think... Hmm. I can do this. Maybe I need to use my foot. <laughs> my slippers are making this hard. No. I just need to grab the wire. This is the plan. This is the plan. Come here. There we go. Okay. Is it close enough? Can you see me? No, okay. That's funny. Didn't even go far enough down for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ah. Okay, can we like... Okay, I think I... Ow! Jesus. That's hot. That's close to boiling. <laughs> it's okay, I didn't burn myself. It was just hot. Alright, we're good. Ugh, I need to scoot the chair. This is a great start to the stream. Shame on you for getting tea out of a plastic bag. What? It's... It's just how it was packaged. And it's airtight. Who cares if it's airtight? <laughs> Leo. And I do have Pu'er. I'm, I'm gonna pull it out maybe tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow is, uh, I'm pulling Evan Hadfield on, so that might be perfect. I don't know why. Pu'er seems like an Evan Hadfield tea. All right, check this out. Even just a minute and 40 in there, look how much the tea leaves have unfurled. Isn't that cool? There. Isn't that cool? All right, there's got to be a way... To keep this up. I don't want to leave the kettle on the stand because it makes a very high-pitched whine, almost like a CRT television. You can go there. Perfect. I just had to move my album. By the way, this this is the collector not collector's edition. It's just like the deluxe edition, I guess, of Casualties of Cool. Seriously, buy this album by Devin. It's uh, Devin Townsend and Shea Amy Dorval. Shea is a lot more obscure, but Devin Townsend is amazing. And yeah, it does smell good. One of the pleasures of making loose leaf tea like this is you get to smell the leaves. That is really good. Ooh, it's, it's, the name says it all. It's really flowery. Any controversial tea opinions? The quality of white tea is usually just people being snobby. And you can enjoy any kind of white tea because white tea tends to have a very diverse uh, sort of flavor to it. Like different white teas have very diverse flavors. Can I break out the hurdy-gurdy? I might. Maybe I do that on the last day. <laughs> no, I'm not sponsored, I promise. I was actually worried people were going to accuse me of being sponsored by Young Mountain Tea because I've already had two of them and I'm going to have more. Any news on the next down the rabbit hole? It's coming close to done. Ryan's getting some music done for it and it's sounding good. It's sounding quite good. Oh, right. No, it's so funny to me that people thought that these streams were about the Quran. It, because Quarren. Quarantine. It, it, it's just a pun on quarantine. I, I've never read the Quran. You're calling me out? This is pre-recorded? Because it because the closed captionings are happening before. That's interesting. I wonder if that's one of the reasons that YouTube delay is so long. Because it wants to give the closed captioning time to work out what it's saying. Yeah, if you don't like green tea, Elvin, that's that's legit. If you if you don't like certain kinds of tea, you're totally fine. Rocco, have I heard of the theremin? Oh, yeah. I did. 
Did I end up doing a report on that for a class in college? Maybe? The theremin's weird. I'm actually not a big fan of it. I, I don't... I know it's weird. People assume that I really like the theremin, but I just don't... Not into it. Well, hey. Even if we started late, it's 120. Let's go ahead and pull Nick in. Oh, Nick. Let me get my headphones on. I meant to call him early. Nick? Beep beep. Hello, Nick. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. I was just reading a little bit of a wiki over here. Being, mm. a, being a nerd. Oh, a wiki? <laughs> a wiki for what? Persona 5. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, right. Are you playing through Persona right now? So, back in 2017, when Persona 5 first came out, um, in, like, uh, the first week or so of April, I had just wrapped up doing a whole bunch of Cabin Fever Dream stuff, and mm. I was raring to go for some kind of break. And everybody was ranting and raving about this game, and JRPGs are not my thing right i had no interest i had no knowledge but it looked cool and everybody was screaming their head off about it and i'm like you know what let's give it a shot let's give it a shot uh -huh. so first week of april beautiful springtime i bring it home and it ate two weeks of my life <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the best memories i've ever had to the point where i loved it so much i got a freaking persona 5 poster that i've got in my place and Persona 5 uh, Royal just came out, which is like this expanded, reimagined edition with more story content and a whole bunch of game overhauls. Oh, interesting. So I've been able to repeat that experience a little bit, even though uh, <laughs> certain conditions right now are not great for matching how they were in 2017. But yeah, yeah since March 31st, right after my latest video, I got it up. I got to download Persona 5 Royal. Nick, I don't, I, yeah, I, I don't need, I didn't need to know that you got it up. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just, I've been beating the crap out of that every day, and being lazy. Again, I, I don't need to I know that, care. Nick. <laughs> just. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> I swear, I'm not usually like this. I apologize. And people say I'm the one who's borderline R-rated in my content. Jesus. You're, you're, yeah, you're the yiffy one. <laughs> God, stop. <laughs> Actually, right. Someone, um, someone made a combination. It was uh, Dippy Dudes. They're they're the person that did the, uh, the bunny that was the preview image for yesterday's stream. They they they're the one that did the owl, shark, uh, rabbit combination i'm like hi i have one more eye than you they drew it with five eyes yeah oh that just reminded me of an image that i saved as like a reaction image of you because it was just so damn good let me see if i could pull it up real quick oh no sorry chat you won't get to see this no i, I, I can show it to them oh cool all right hold oh. on let me see if i can pull this up oh timothy made the announcement in my patreon discord good I realized I forgot to. Oh, I forgot to make the Twitter announcement. I was running a little bit late. Let me take care of that. Uh, Come on, it's in here somewhere. There it is! Uh, that oh, wait, no. <laughs> Hold on. I'll see it in just a moment. I need to... Uh, I, I, no, I no, don't, I don't pipe. No, I don't want to end up with a Tay Zonday stream. Do you know about that? No. About uh, Okay, okay, okay. It's the... Oh, this one, right. The wheeze. This was amazing. <laughs> Hold on. I, I'm going to show stream. This was from when I was... Like, this is a, a bit of fan art from when I was streaming with Mike. I think this was... 
This was when we when we were reading the Eye of Argon. Oh, okay. Oh, so good. Okay, um, adding things to Discord is a little bit slow. Or not Discord. OBS. There we go. Let's. Here we go. This is what he's talking about. <laughs> it's good, right? Yeah, it's so good. I, I saw that once. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to take this because this looks like a perfect reaction image. So I got that saved on my phone. <laughs> I'm so glad. Hold on. Let me see if I can find, um, find that art, actually. I don't tweet out a lot, so it should be a pretty short scroll. It's right... Where'd it go? Uh-oh. Ah! No, I'm losing... Oh, this is going to be a problem, isn't it? That's... All right. I, I really want to find the artist who did this. I, I think I found the artist. But yeah, while you search for that, so, that's, yeah, while that's you why... Yeah, please. I'm so sorry. Dead air. No, it's okay. That's, that's why I, I decided to take such a, such a late slot for quarantine is because I knew, buddy, I love you, but Persona 5R. I gotta just, I gotta binge for like six days and then <laughs> I'll come back to the, the desk for, for once. I haven't been at this desktop willingly since the 31st. Really? Yeah, it's like it's weird to be sitting down here knowing that I'm I'm back on the mic and I'll be sitting here for a little bit of anything related to the channel for a minute because he's just like my brain's been in Japan, man, with a bunch of high school students kicking ass for a week. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Now I've um it always comes it always comes to gaming, right? I on these streams, you always end up talking about gaming in one way or, or another. That's probably what most people are doing nowadays right now. I imagine that there's a lot of people who are like, well, I can finally catch up on all the things on Netflix, all the things on Hulu, those books on my shelf, and these video games. So they've been doing that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I made a Donga reference. Uh, dead air. Um, it's I, I don't watch the kill stream. I just, I don't even know that much about it. Like, I watched a couple of videos trying to break down what happened to the kill stream, and I just, I, I don't know if it's just because it's impenetrable, because I know it's impenetrable, but I also just kind of don't care. I did the same thing with uh, some of the mukbangers. It was uh, Chantal, was it Foodie Beauty? I just, I don't care. I just don't care. <laughs> that's that's the problem and I, i'll probably never make a video about the kill stream or tonka saw or or you know chantal or um what is it the other what is the like uh who's the other one um who's the other really big one that people like making fun of uh, amberlyn reed that's what it is. I'll probably ne never make a video on Amberlynn Reed because just... I don't care. I tried to care. Isn't it? Isn't it fun how there are so many things that you want to do on YouTube and so many people in your ear about, Do this! Do that! Cover this! What about this? And you look at it and it's like, I really don't care and I can't be made to. <laughs> yeah. It's... that. There's so many more interesting... There are things that are more interesting to me. Like, and it, I know it's kind of weird to say, oh, um, I was interested in Wings of Redemption, but I'm not interested in Amberlynn Reed, right? First of all, you know, watching the videos of someone stuffing their face is not palatable to me. Like, I, I can't handle that. I can handle someone playing Call of Duty, but, like, mukbangs repulse me, uh, yeah. just as a general rule. Um, it's and so th there's destructive a, to the system too. It's different. It's I mean, if you're eating that much food, like tons of food, yeah. But even like in regular portions, I don't want to watch someone eat. Um, but also, I just think the story of Wings is more interesting because his story is, frankly, he's more relatable. He's more, he's he's a lot more sympathetic. Was the term I was looking for? He's a very sympathetic person. Yeah. Jay it's the not... Gaming Panda? Yes, I love GTFO. I've been loving that game. I, I just need to play it. 
but I, I, I have a group of people I like playing it with and finding time to play. Continue, Nick. I'm sorry. Yeah, see, that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand about content that they suggest to you and honestly probably me is it, it, it probably goes hand in hand is it doesn't matter if it's weird uh, down the rabbit hole viewers. What Fred needs out of it is a story, a bona fide yeah. story, not an off off topic. Well, this is a weird and gross thing or shocking thing. It needs to be a story. If there's not a story, there's not a video, which is yeah. <laughs> the same it's, for me. Because down the rabbit hole is story time. And and so yeah. is Nightmind. Yeah. Night, Nightmind is the same way. And FYI, um, to those who don't know, my guest is Nick Nocturne. Um, he is the host of, and creator of Nightmind. So if you've seen that on YouTube, that's where it's from. He's... you. If you don't know all of his content, you might recognize him from his breakdowns of This House Has People In It and Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Those are your two most popular ones, aren't they? Yeah. Yep, those are. Uh, for anybody who's not familiar with my channel or my content, the best way to put it is this. Fred and I do exactly the same thing except for one factor. He tells real scary stories. I tell fake scary stories. Yes. <laughs> yep. That's, I, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Yep. Ah, oh, this, this is good. It's, I'm, I, I'm not a huge fan of like the real sort of musty oolongs. I know that's kind of popular in China. Hmm. 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 Oh, what's up? Team is interesting. Um, is one of the things that's in Persona Five is that you you live inside the attic of a coffee shop by somebody who's um who's taken you in after you got put on probation for a crime, which is basically the start of the whole story. Mm -hmm. um, and so as you go through, you can go ahead and learn from this dude how to make coffee, and it teaches you about all these different blends. And I'm just sitting there with my Obviously, sugar-laden, cream-laden coffee, <laughs> thinking, I am such an uncultured swine. <laughs> With all these varieties and all this talk of all these different coffee flavors. And like, I can't even have the balls to have it black. <laughs> it's got an entire world. And then it's just like, you, you, your comment about the tea has just reminded me. But at least tea, you can try a whole bunch of different ones and immediately pick up on different flavors and things oh yeah like green tea tastes nothing like white tea tastes like i guess you can have um some oolong teas that taste a bit like green teas or white teas a little bit but they're pretty distinct flavors yeah yeah sometimes oh that, that reminds me i think this is something that might i might have told you Early, mm. early on, <laughs> when I was first doing Nightlines, um, I had no idea how to survive that long on a microphone because uh, I had never done it. So I looked up, like, how do you do this? How do you prep and, and treat and care for your voice while you do something like this? And so it recommended teas. And so I had a ritual where uh -huh. every time that I would go to go and jump on the mic, I would brew myself like this lavender herbal tea and load it up with honey and go through that. And then I realized like a few episodes in after after the Marvel Hornet series and then some it's like, bro, you don't need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had periods where just like, you know what? I'm feeling nostalgic. I'm going to break out the tea. Mm -hmm. And then so I've had the tea and I've had a giggle to myself. It's like. Oh, I remember those days, those sweet, sweet days <laughs> mm -hmm. where I was so, so new to all of this. Mm -hmm. I, I've kind of had the opposite experience. I, I've gotten more and more critical of my voice to the point that for this newest down the rabbit hole, I just, I just recently recorded, right? A few days yeah. ago, I listened back to it and I'm like, man, this is subpar. I'm like, uh, I, I feel like I didn't really do that great of a job. And then I listen back the next day and I compare it to from a few episodes ago. And I'm like, there is a distinct in like improvement from yeah. a few episodes ago. I'm like, I, I thought that this was bad. It's just that I'm, I'm gaining 
the ability to be more critical of my own voice. One of the things that I've gotten very conscious of is mouth clicks, and I, I've kept trying to change things and do things to fix them until finally, with this most recent episode, I just said, screw it, I'm going to hydrate lightly throughout the day, make sure that I'm plenty hydrated, and then in the evening, I'll start recording. And it actually saved me a lot of time and effort, just making sure that I was plenty hydrated beforehand. Yeah, that's, that's the same for me, is I don't need the tea anymore, and ironically, I will have a coffee on the side. Um, it, it's it just my ritual now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will yeah. make sure that I've got the water, and I've got to have the water yes. during it, and I've got to be hydrated beforehand. Of course. As, as for clicks and things, um... They happen, you know. That's that's why audio is the longest part of the process. Yeah, People you you fix it in post. You show me your process. I'm gonna lower yep. the exposure. There we go. That's perfect. It was a little bit too bright. And it's a long, long pain in the ass, tedious process. But I do it because I cannot stand imperfections in the audio. And then at the same time, I have the same experience as you, but a little bit worse. I look back at some of my old videos and I go. <laughs> How could anybody bear to listen to me? Holy shit. Oh, I God, need to yeah. remaster this. <laughs> I, I, I feel that. I feel that really hard. See, you, you do it all in post. I tend to just have a very long narration day to get it sounding really good. And then that actually saves time overall. It's more efficient. And um, I like building up that skill. It, it's... It's frustrating for sure, right? Like, narration day is always the most frustrating part of the process, but I feel like I'm getting better every time. And on top of that, like because I'm building up this skill, I can apply it in other places potentially. Yeah, no, you definitely can. Um, can't say much, but I'm definitely got an opportunity on just voice stuff. <laughs> so you can definitely find places, um, and that is. The most wonderful thing is when that door finally opens for you, but you do get better every time. And I'm glad that I've gotten better every time. My approach to audio, and, and we've definitely had this discussion, um, I just charge, man, because yeah. I do not trust myself to come back to it later. I will lose the flow. I, I heard earlier when you were telling the chat that you had to re-record a line, and we're really just trying to get into it. And I feel that so much. Because when you get into the flow, you keep it. And you're going to break it when you sit down and, and declare it done. If you come back even as much as an hour later, half an hour later maybe, right. good luck. Good luck getting it to match. Right. Yeah, that's why I, I, I always record all of my narration in one day. Sometimes I step away from the microphone and I've been able to identify the factors that change what can make your voice sound a little bit different in between recording sessions. So I've, I've learned how to manage that. Um, however, day to day, it's a lot harder to manage. Like when I, I was mentioning earlier, yeah, you were saying, uh, you, you heard that I was trying to re-record re a line and I had to do it over and over and over again, just to get it to match. Cause yeah. it's, it's, it's especially bad because it was a phrase in the middle of a sentence that I had to re-record. Oof. Yeah, but I did it. Oh, middle of the sentence. Oh, I'd be so pissed at myself. It's like, really? Really? I gotta go back in there? Oh, the best part, and this is the best part, people don't know about this. When you're reading a script and you realize, oh god, I don't know how, if I actually know how to pronounce that word. So mm -hmm. you just go, oh, shit. And then you yep, sit yeah, down yeah, you and stop. you open pronunciation. Yep. <laughs> And, and you listen to it, and it's like, okay, it's, it's pronounced like this, good. And then you're back at it. But you feel so stupid for a minute. It's like, I need to remember next time to look this up before I attack it. Because yep. I, I got stopped in the middle of the script to learn how to pronounce this thing. So I oh. have made fun of it in the comments again for the last time. I messed up a pronunciation. Oh, yeah, no. I'm, like, one of the memes on my channel at this point is... um. I pronounced Forbes, you like the magazine, as Forbes. So now people just like Ooh. it when I whenever I have a live stream. <laughs> it's been like a year and a half since I did something before quarantine, but like I'd still occasionally get four B emojis in the chat. 
I never lived it down, and I never will. <laughs> oh, <I don't>... <laughs> man. Oh, what was mine? Oh, oh, this is a, <laughs> this is a fun one. Oh, no. And this, this, this was horrible. This was horrible, because this was, admittedly, I, I, I live in a region that is quite very much opposite of Fred. Uh, he is, you know, northwest. Yeah, Pacific I am northwest. northeast. So there is a regional dialect, and at times, it can pop up. Once it popped up, and I didn't take the necessary moment, and this was when I was still learning my way. This was young Nightmind stuff, mm -hmm. where... You know, I can know now whenever I say something, it's like, oh, you know what? Say that line again, because you can't be too careful with that. Right. Uh, and it, you're surprised. It's surprising how many little ticks you catch. But this one time I was saying such an artistic dot, 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 whatever the rest of the line was. Oh, no. It came out sounding as autistic. <laughs> <laughs> And the comments lit me up over it. <laughs> Not because they thought I was being insulting. They right. knew I was trying to say artistic. Right, right. But the regional dialect got in there and it kneecapped the R because when you live anywhere in the vicinity of Massachusetts, you can't pronounce your ass. You, you just, you can't. Something is going to take them and steal them away and stick them on the end of words where they don't belong, like a soda. But, right. <laughs> yeah, that was the one that I was like, oh man. This is this that's taught me immediately. If it sounds like you said something else, re-record the line because the comment section is gonna get you. Mm. <laughs> that's that like that hap like that's that's something that I'm that I tell the people who are reviewing my script. It's like, please, if there's something wrong with it, even if you think there's just an inkling of something wrong with it, please tell me before the comments do. I, yeah. I'd rather you see it and tell me than, like, it go out in front of the audience. Yeah, and you know what? Have you gotten to the point yet where as you're writing your script, you're going over words and thinking, I can't pronounce that so well in, in, in the booth. Let me change that out. Oh, that's something that I already did with my writing before I started down the rabbit hole. I'm always thinking about the cadence of the words. Um, I I really feel like there's a lot of potential power in um, the rhythm of writing. Even if you're not speaking it aloud, someone will read it in a particular way. And I try to make that rhythm impactful and also uh, reflect what the writing is saying. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, the moments where you're you know that you've tried, let's say, consonants or vowels or, or conjunctions together in a way like this, and you've had to retry the line like five times. Right. And you're like, I'm not going to do that. to yep. myself. Yep. No, I, I've, I've done like... that. <laughs> I, I've, I've changed the line specifically because pronouncing it was too difficult. I, yep. I, I have given up and just changed the wording. Standard English, but you trip on it anyway. <laughs> it's part of the problem is that sometimes two syllables next to each other make it difficult to enunciate in a way that is like is accurate to the rest of the script. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in regular conversation, you might not notice it. But when you're being hypercritical of the way that you're narrating, you're going to notice it and you know the audience is going to notice it and it just won't fly. Yeah. Oh, little things. <laughs> little tricks with internet stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. I've also, um, I sometimes have to pronounce foreign words, especially in the new script. I have oh, yeah. to, yeah, you know. Um, yeah. And there are some long ones. And it's like, I didn't practice properly before narration. Like, I knew how to pronounce them, but getting them natural is difficult and when you're swapping between one language and another when you're swapping between english which is very far forward in the mouth and practically any other language you're really changing the way that you pronounce things and i know that it's going to sound i'm going to sound like a foreigner when i say these words but damn it i tried but it's hard it's hard because the best you have part to... about it is that you have, you have conviction when you yeah. do it you don't have acid you try to go for the accent right and i think it, it comes across as you trying to be authentic and actually kind of loving the word that you're saying. Right, yeah. It's like, 
you're at the very least getting the pronunciation more accurate. And I think that often trying, even if you don't have, you know, the months of practice necessary to get the pronunciation just right, um, it's better to pronounce it closer to the proper pronunciation. For example, um, I recently learned everyone calls him Gary Kasparov, but it's Kasparov. And even mm. if my accent is terrible, it's still closer to the correct pronunciation. And I think especially people who speak the language natively appreciate it when you try that. That's been my experience. When you try, at the very least, and you um, use the correct, the, the correct, the correct vowels. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say the same, because if you think about people who speak other languages attempting stuff in English, it always puts a smile on your face when they, they strive for it and they get it. Mm -hmm. So it must, it must be kind of a universal sort of concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's at the, at the very worst, it's endearing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at the very worst, it's endearing. But Speaking I do try. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of pronunciations. Pronunciation book. I kept wanting to say guide in in the recording uh -huh. and even mentally as I was going over it in the video that I just did on Synodyne. Yeah, I watched uh, that. That is one. Thank you. That is one of the videos that for the longest time I kept thinking I might want to get you in on this. Yeah. Yeah, that that was the one. And I just realized because you know we've had conversations recently it's yeah, like there are yeah. other options there are but for this one it's like you know what no i gotta i gotta do this as a crown jewel of cabin fever dreams this time and just yes. go for it mm -hmm. what are a you... freaking ride that experience was huh god i i've it's such wasted potential mm. I, it's so frustrating i'm like i get it like it, it's frustrating to see them do something chiefly that they're not as good at it's like their their promotion synodyne's promotion is better than their actual product which is that's what sucks yeah so disappointing it, 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 it's like how like you guys you're so good at this just do this they nailed a lot of the um actual creative and technical criteria as mm. far as having the understanding of how will people receive this and how to play with them and just the overall idea of how is this going to translate in a human way right they <clears throat> failed so hard absolute face plant mm -hmm. it's it's just too bad it is like i was I've, I've been waiting so long to tell this story too because mm -hmm. i've only got a few cases um in in my history of seeing things where I could tell people, you want to talk about stories where the ARG or unfiction attempt completely bombed? Mm -hmm. I've got a couple of cases, one of them really bad, but very mm -hmm. unknown, uh, which is for the best because they don't deserve to be known. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> after the shit they pulled. But Cynodyne, everybody knew. Yeah, their shame. Cynodyne, though, everybody knew. And mm -hmm. I was there at the time nobody could believe it i couldn't believe it it was absolutely a case of <laughs> i went through a few changes in the script um my original <laughs> here's, here's the trivia folks if you watch the cinetime video when i say there has never been a bigger stand in back of a horse and hit it with a book reaction in unfiction or web series the line was originally there has never been a bigger stick your dick in a door and slam it moment yeah, it's... <laughs> in, this, in, this here, in the field. And I kept thinking about that and like, you know what? I could be smarter with this and in a way that YouTube's content ID system doesn't attack me for saying that. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, I guess what's so frustrating about it is they were purposefully crafting it as a viral marketing campaign and then it went viral like I, at first i wanted to say oh they didn't expect it to get as much attention as it did but it's that a viral marketing campaign yeah and i mean they did this is my milwaukee they mm -hmm. know that they can pull this off yeah and they, they knew, knew the reach of horse ebooks and um and pronunciation book 
they were witnessing and witnessing that in live time. Horse ebooks was a phenomenon onto itself that was getting articles written about it. Yes. It had a stupidly huge and dedicated following. So it's it's one of those cases where especially looking at the way they explained it after and the first few interviews when they opened up you can tell oh god oh god they had one of those california art school mindsets going yes. into this and they didn't yep. think about any of the practical factors which mm. frankly even even the most dedicated weirdo artists online think about the human reaction factor they do it's on their minds they anticipate it and they try to make it work even though people are going to be like what the hell are you doing here mm -hmm. i don't think cinodyne did i really don't and it blew up so hard in their faces and oh boy oh boy i do remember um i didn't say in the script but i did remember seeing some tiny hint of some sort of necessary monetization gateway yes in the project after the fact but it slipped my mind until i found that piece in the article and it's mm -hmm. like i got a flash in my brain of being so much younger and trying to go into this and realizing oh oh it's some sort of paid online game screw with that and then right. you know i was completely done with the night with it for the night but it took dipping into that again to remember and i couldn't believe it all over again i really couldn't it felt like I've a betrayal seen, right it, it felt like a betrayal it felt like one of the dumbest possible ideas and even if it was an artistic statement in line with the story about how you know these money grubbing assholes look right they, you need to pay even these people to be part of this experience like a ha ha sort of thing there could have been a thousand better ways to do it there really could have that's and i've since watched the apparent free version the first impact on youtube which somebody miraculously recorded it's nothing to write home about yeah it's really not it's not something to pay for a second act for and it's disgusting in the first place that somebody would charge that especially in this form it's been debated up and down for years of like how do you do this sort of thing successfully and make money with it right and not infuriate people or make them feel ripped off because in order for a lot of these better projects to survive in the field as a whole to thrive eventually yes there needs to be a profit model baked in there needs to be some kind of way to figure it out but this is so not the way to go yeah holy I, crap it's not the way to go i was actually really hoping that i get to talk to you about this because i recognize part of their problem and it's it's a theming problem looking at horse ebooks and pronunciation book i think and the way they tried to monetize it i think it would have gone over better if the themes were more clear because just, oh, also, this is going to be a game about the housing market. <laughs> it, it it felt like it came out of left field. It oh, yeah. didn't it did not fit the theme of the game. So at that point, it's like they felt like two entirely different things. Now, if pronunciation book was like indicting the bankers, like, you know, using banking terms and like maybe one of their one of the things, uh, one of the words they say is Enron or something, right? Yeah. If, if they're obviously making references to it, maybe it might have gone over better, especially if there was something after it. But because the viral marketing and the game were so separate, so different tonally and thematically, it felt like there was just, oh yeah, also buy this thing. It, it felt like a this like this ARG is sponsored by NordVPN, like that kind of thing. It's this it has ARG nothing is to do you by Cash for Gold. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's like it it did not feel cohesive, and I I people would have been willing to forgive it more if there was more coaxing in that direction. But at the same time, the fact that it's like oh, it's just a game, just admitting it at that point also did not help because mixing. 
you have the problem of the medium where well, the immersion fact yeah ARGs are very immersive and they suggest hey this might be real whereas games they like that game for example is not making any pretense that it's real so you're going from something that is very purposefully immersive to something that is like by definition you know separate from whoever is viewing it or playing it and so thematically tonally um even in the medium none of it worked yeah it's true and and another thing that i i realized in their article they say that their justification for horsey books and pronunciation book being the vector that got them out there was that they were human embodiments of corporate or online things in the world of Bear Stearns Bravo. Watching First Impact? No, they aren't. They're not even mentioned. I couldn't mm -hmm. find it. I could not find it. Not yeah. a freaking hint of it. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this one real quick. I, I, some I, people are... I breathed in a little bit of tea. Please take over. Oh, oh <laughs> it's OK. Be careful. There's, there's some people in, in the chat right now who are who are dropping hints at a meme. I, uh, you know, cash for gold and something else that's quite infamous. And for anybody <laughs> who didn't get it, I am never one to try to explain a joke unless I really want people to get the joke. Okay, okay. Hit me. <laughs> and Cabin Fever Dreams this year has a very specific kind of ongoing joke. Yes. <laughs> and there's one point of it where I went 110% purely for the factor of I can get away with this joke. And yes. I want everybody to get it. And I'm going to be browsing comments and replies on Twitter to see who got it. And only 20% did. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're part of that 20%, congratulations. If you're not, please go tell the uninformed. Because then they will get to laugh too. And that's all I feel I can say on the subject without some sort of action against me. <laughs> I'll leave but it. Kevin Don't worry. Fever Dreams time, I have so much... I always aim to have fun in some form. Mm. If not directly with the content, then with stuff surrounding the content. This is my time to be an April Fool. Speak, speaking of, yeah. have you have you thought about the, the, the topic that I suggested that, that we might want to take a peek at? The other, the other yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I still need to take a look. I've actually been okay. waffling with the idea of... Um, <clears throat> Between what we first talked about and the second, I realized there was an expanded version of the first option. Excuse me? Which, yeah. I missed that? I think so. Because um, if you take if you take a look at option A uh -huh. that you brought to the table and everything that you told me about that, I think it's one book on a shelf by an author, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. for sure. So why not why not take a look at the author himself and see if there's a whole topic there to be had instead? I I, I think there would be. I, I we need to talk about this after the stream. Um yeah. yeah you want to hang out after the stream and chat about it? Because yeah, we'll I, I also am very passionate about the second topic and I'd love to dig into that too. And it's like yeah. maybe you could just take the first one and then I could join for the second one. Potentially. Yeah, either one. Whatever. Or... Whatever. Whatever. We'll we'll talk about it. We'll figure it out. No. <laughs> we have secrets. <laughs> we have secrets. Secret. <laughs> Zit was it. Cover up secrets and lies. I guess. <laughs> the video. Oh God. Dead air. Dead air. Dead air. Dead air. Donga. I, I I swear, I, I, I know. Now people are going to be like, oh my god, he's doing one on Tonka Saw. No, I'm not. <laughs> I need to reiterate. No, oh, probably Jesus. not. I've got, we've got someone in the comments saying, uh, from Abby, hey Nick, has anyone ever said you sound like Cecil Baldwin? One cabin fever dreams years ago, and you know what? They Abby might be saying this because they know, so they're just trying to get my mm -hmm. goat here. 
I ended the season by doing Welcome to Night Vale. Yep, I, saw, after, I watched it. Like, yeah, after like over a year of being pestered about that fact of, are you Cecil Baldwin? And I wanted to <laughs> scream and tear my hair out because everybody beyond just that joke was actually asking me to cover Night Vale. And the report that I had to come back with was, it's not that deep, bro. <laughs> it's really not. It's, it's really, really not. not. It's, God, I... I, I know that there are going to be tons of people in chat that that don't like this opinion. The first season of Welcome to Night Vale was some of the funniest dark comedy I've ever heard. And then it jumped the shark and just got really dull. And it it's like it was constantly making an in-joke, but the in-joke was just, ha ha, we're welcome to Night Vale. Amen. Amen. I, get, I agree. <laughs> I'm so angry. I, I, I was so frustrated because I loved Welcome to Night Vale and then it just got bad. I've got I've got hot I've gotten hot opinions about Night Vale still. Altogether, I, I maintain everything that I said, but there there are still factors of it I think about and I've thought about it since and it, it's you know, as it grew past the point of my coverage too for what they were doing it just it further instilled the some of the bad taste that i had after the fact and towards the end mm -hmm. <sighs> and, and i read the novel too i did yeah yeah i remember you talking about that yeah um My now it was great but then they simpsoned it yeah kind of yeah a, a little bit i i felt i felt kind of similar it with with a touch of not not to interrupt but but Here before i lose a thought simpsoned it with a touch of Ryan Murphy from American Horror Story in the later seasons. I'm not I'm Sticking not their familiar. nose too much. Um So Ryan Murphy <clears throat> and I'm I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who feel this and have caught it. American Horror Story's best seasons were its early ones because mm -hmm. as it went on, you felt and saw more and more Ryan Murphy injecting himself into the series. And it just ruined things. Yeah. And Night Vale definitely, I feel, has a touch of that. Yeah. With its creators. I. Um. I. I know you're. Fam you're probably familiar with Limetown, right? Yes. Yeah. Um. I listened. I. I actually was current with the second season, and then I stopped because I wanted to wait for them to keep going. And like, li season two of Limetown was still great, but it couldn't hold a candle to season one. Season one was just so good. I am telling you, it's cool. I did move on to that after Night Vale. Yeah, it's. Oh, I I remember getting dragged into it. Like I I binged it really like the first season really hard. But you know what else I moved on to during that same time frame? And this this was, oh, this was like the crown. That oh. this felt so good. The black tapes. I'm not familiar. I've never even heard that name. It's it's um a paranormal investigation uh podcast. Story story driven. If you know they they play they play with that fiction just like Lime Town. Um ongoing and oh man, it just it felt so good and it just it kept on going and it never lost its stuff and I was listening to it and I'm like between this and Lime Town, I get it now, dude. I really get it. I get how this is an emerging story form again. I get how people love this stuff. Yeah. And there was a dude in there that I haven't listened to in a while. He sounded like Alex Creeley from Marble Hornets, and it made me giggle every oh, time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was so glad that you were there to help guide me through Marble Hornets. I, I watched that whole series. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I can't listen to my voice in that anymore because it makes me puke. <laughs> I, I I understand. I understand. Uh, the the audio balancing was obviously you were new, and I and I knew it was. I could tell it was sort of a, a passion project sort of thing that you threw together. It's it's kind of cool that you were able to turn it into what it is now. Yeah, I I feel I still feel blessed. It was that was that was pure baby Nick, and it, it still does make me as much as it makes me cringe. It does make me smile. Mm-hmm. It's... We're, we'll complain about YouTube forever, but... Yeah. 
it's a really awesome career. It truly is. It's, it's, it's a blessing. And, and I think that it also helps that we're both a little bit more comfortable because we know, like, even if YouTube flops or our channels die or whatever, we, we have skills that we can apply to similar projects down the line. It's, it's not an empty hole like, you know, someone who chases YouTube trends. We're, we're, yeah. we're in a very fortunate position where we can, like, worst case scenario, we can transition out of YouTube into something else. Yeah. Like, we, we are building like... our portfolio. Oh, yeah. We're YouTube not eating on camera. So many... <laughs> yeah, so, so many channels. It's You look at it, and I do think, looking at them, this is great what you're doing in the moment, sure. Mm. But if YouTube were to collapse tomorrow, what would you have? Right. And well, the I mean, answer comes back, and it's either A, nothing, or B, a repugnant history online when your employer looks you up when you, they get your resume. Right. Well, they see you've been out of the workforce for how many years? And that's just like... And then like, they look oof. you up, and then, and then they see that you spent, what, three years chasing trends, talking about vloggers and their drama? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you know, that's that's not that's not a great one. There's yeah. some technical skill they, they can talk about having from there on, but mm -hmm. it does, that is a factor of it when you run certain kinds of channels. Uh, Zalukand in the chat just said, TikTok mukbang. Yeah, there you go. There's a transferable skill <laughs> there outside, you go. Of, outside the internet. <laughs> I, can, I can record myself eating a disgusting amount of food. <laughs> okay, oh, uh, but can you serve it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god fucking brutal i it's <laughs> no it's it, it feels good to be able to build on this skill and i mean what what we're talking about is why dark side phil and wings of redemption are stuck where they are it's because their skills aren't terribly transferable to anything else it's youtube and that's it and it's it's a shame because as, as great as this place is, and I know you've got to feel the same, I, I know other people who feel the same, is as much fun as we have with this and as much as we love it, we do not and will not be here forever. For sure. Like, if it got to a point where it's been 10 years and I don't have a whole bunch of other things that I'm actively doing as much or more than Nightmind, mm. that's, that's a failure on my part, I feel. Right. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's down the rabbit hole like and things like it i can see myself doing this for decades to come right and maybe maybe youtube doesn't die or maybe my channel doesn't die for a very long time maybe i'm doing this for another 15 years like sure great i mean it's that's the nice thing right is it's indefinite it, like what we're doing what we're doing is both tied to our interests and like and, and not just you know current interests like these are evergreen interests these are things that we're never really... It's doubtful that we're going to lose interest in them for a very, very long time. And even like even supposing you stop being as interested in ARGs, right? There's still so many strange things that you can talk about. I mean, hell, you could transition Nightmind into being something more like down the rabbit hole if you really wanted to. Um, yeah. And in the same way, like... I can play with the format. I, I can play with the form of down the rabbit hole a little bit. I, I love making informational content, but I can I can just cha like change the form, change topics. Every topic is completely new, so I never get bored. I've never yeah. been bored working on down the rabbit hole. Now, I have run out of energy before. Yeah, no, I feel that. And I've, I've had... I've had little moments oh. of boredom when I realized some things, but yeah, I saw it too. I, I, I just saw it. Sup, sup, internet. Give it up to him, the inspiration behind my take on Hot Braid. <laughs> <laughs> you want, you want, you want a full Monty here? There you go. You want to understand why, what part of the reason I did it? That beautiful, genius, hilarious man is part of the reason that I did that because that is the top tier. And when you see a king attempt something like that, and you get an opportunity to jump for that golden ring, mm. god damn it, you're gonna jump. <laughs> <laughs> <I did. laughs> 
But hey, he, internet he, historian! It's real good to see you in my chat. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, welcome. give it, give it up for the man. Give it up for the man, internet historian. I um, th there's a funny story actually. Um, in internet historian's newest video on No Man's Sky, there's a point in it where the there's a uh, professor, like there's a dude who's like, sometimes foreshadowing is obvious, right? Yeah. When I was watching it, um, I was watching it with him and I was, I paused the video and I'm like, that's my old professor. That's Evan Gottlieb. I took English 345 literary criticism and theory from him at Oregon State University. Holy shit. Yeah. I, was, I freaked out for a moment. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I I had a Damn. I had a serious freak out moment. I'm like, you did like I knew he didn't do that on purpose. I was just like, what the hell? And then I look and it's like, oh, you know, my old college is making videos about like literary theory. Okay. Here's another weird thing for for you, Chad. And you know what? Internet historian, you can probably attest to this too, because you you might have experienced this yourself, but I think you and I, Fred, can definitely agree. YouTube really is like falling down a rabbit hole. You enter Wonderland and the world is so much smaller than you realize. And yeah. it's almost hysterically scary. Mm hmm. It's. Yeah. So many things are connected that you would not expect. It's like it's like life was written by a by a by a TV series team. And they were just waiting to have these characters meet each other from all these different episodes well, that like, they were introduced. Well, we've had this conversation, right? It's, yeah. I, we realized at some point that I'm basically living the large beats of your life one year behind you. Yeah. To the point that we can make predictions based off of it. Yeah. It's been uncanny. Yeah. We live in a fantasy story. It's weird. Oh, my cat tore ass into the room. Is there anybody who heard the, the door squeak? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Regular two-eyed. Mm. No, it, it's really weird. It's I've had so many moments of it since I started YouTube where I've, I've had the honestly shocking and strange feeling of it's true what they say about the world being small and somehow it keeps getting smaller and it's freaking me out. <laughs> the, the the cables of the internet are tying around everyone and pulling them together. Yeah. We're, we're getting hogtied. <laughs> it's such a big world, and yet it's so small. It's, all, it's almost like... Okay. Sometimes you do just want to look at the sky and scream, and simulation to see what happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's... What was it? Computer. End program. That's what it is. Someone was say someone was asking if I watched TNG in the chat. The answer is yes. I love Next Generation. That that to me is Star Trek. Like you, not the original series, not you no know, any other like Voyager and eh, kind of Next Generation. That's Star Trek to me. Is the YouTube MCU? <laughs> <laughs> the internet is in a series of cables it's a series of tubes <laughs> dead air all right the, sweet. Tubes. the hot water is ready and balls bouncing around back inside them. i i hate that the series of tubes description is actually pretty accurate like reason yeah. reasonably accurate it's because electrical wires essentially act as tubes yeah sort of <laughs> ds oh, yeah deep space place. nine deep space nine is also great um god i deep space nine how much star trek have you watched nick i can't remember i asked you this before i feel none none, none. watch next generation i next it is, generation yeah next generation is it's very episodic. Okay, here, how about this? If you want an episodic series, then watch Next Generation. It also has like some amazing, it's still a bit hokey, but 
It has some of the best acting, one of the best realized sci-fi universes, like utopic universes. Um, but very, still very problematic, right? Like, the, nothing is perfect. Yeah. Um, and they're desperately trying to work things out. Um, Deep Space Nine is a serial. So if you want a serial, then Deep Space Nine is where you go, because it's like there's tons of plots, and it's also showing, like, the Federation isn't uh, quite as perfect as people maybe hope it is. And it also shows, like more of the the struggles of multiculturalism but also like the potential benefits of it because it, it's god i love star trek i love star trek i can't i can't recommend next generation and deep space nine enough although star trek picard looks kind of garbage it looks like schlock <laughs> okay that's, Which is too bad. You know, I'm sorry. I, I went on a rant. I, I went no, on. I, I went on like um, a mic. You can't rant. go on a rant in a, in a show without topics. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're fine. I I, I did um, a Mike Stolkosta. Is it Stolkosta? A Mike Stolkosta rant. I don't know, but um, it, it reminds me of uh, <clears throat> oh the uh the last the last head that I built. Um, yeah. Right. The, when I when I worked on that, I just I binged the hell out of uh, out of Twilight Zone on Netflix, like in continuation from a previous time that I did that. So that's the most experience I have with recently binging some something kind of in that terrain. I don't know. It just it reminded me of my my time watching Twilight Zone, but Star Trek and stuff like that I've never watched. I've seen clips. If I were to begin watching, I think it would definitely be the real old stuff to have that kind of effect that Twilight Zone gave me a bit of. What was it like back mm -hmm. when these legacy products first rolled out? Right. And it some of it's so good. Like, the fact that it's that they're all individual shorts means that it's very hit and miss. But when it hits, it really hits. Hmm. There are some that are just so, so strong. Um, I, I need heard. to watch more of it. Yeah. And you know what? That's uh, that's another thing that reminds me of the Twilight Zone is um, because people have said that, is that there are just certain episodes of original Star Trek that it hits you in a human way that you'd never expect something that's sci-fi like that to do so, which is the same with Twilight Zone because there were just some episodes of Twilight Zone, man, where... You really sit there and think they had this all the way back in the freaking 60s when oh, they filmed this stuff? Reading old sci-fi is really interesting. I love it. And comparing it to modern sci-fi, it's it's so cool to see the progression. Also, there's yeah. there's a particular comment in chat that I really like. Frederick's voice, the sound of rain pattering on my roof. Nick's voice is a soft pillow you flop onto after a long day, and Internet Historian's voice is a quiet library filled with dust. <laughs> I do like that. I read that. I like it. I, I appreciate that. The, the man himself, Internet Historian, just yeah. asked, you guys watch Tiger King? That felt like they were stealing your content, exactly the kind of story you guys would cover. I keep seeing this blow up online, and I'm even understanding memes about it when I haven't even watched the content. Yeah, I, That's I haven't seen it. how big it is. I still I need to. I still need to sit down for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I need to find the time. I, I've never had a Netflix account. Really? Yeah, I just. The problem is I don't consume television. Usually, the the kind of content I tend to consume are, uh, YouTube, you know, videos, um, podcasts while I'm eating, um, uh, games, and books. It's hard. It's hard to do anything else for watching when you live this life, because most of your stuff is your own ecosystem, right? But I do, I do get on Netflix every now and then, especially when they've got something I was looking forward to or that I keep up with regularly. Um, but yeah, everybody's been saying that, and I suspected as much. I suspected as much as much internet historian from the description of it, because there are so many little hints of. This is some sort of weird documentary series about some insane thing that happened, and it instantly brought to mind Fred <laughs> and all the people that he has covered. Well, so, to be to be fair, I'm basically aping off of a lot of old, um, 
Like I, I heard that they didn't use my style quite as much, but I mean, nothing that I'm doing is terribly revolutionary. I know you said before that that your greatest influence for this stuff was Nova. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and me, me, I'm just I'm I'm a new age Elvira that's not trying to be as funny in between stuff and analyzing it. I'm like a I'm a weird horror host. I'm a different yeah. horror host kind, <laughs> but not, nothing is original about what we do. It's just no. the execution of it, really. Mm -hmm. It's. Well, I mean, even I am sort of ripping off Ken Burns a little bit. It's, right, Ken Burns as well. Nova and Ken Burns, yep. Yeah, it's just the straight facts using um, historical, like, photographs and video, uh, archived stuff to tell the story. Um, although, he, like... No, he's just, he just does one thing, and he's really, really good at it. I, I kind of recognize that I'm going to live in the shadow of Ken Burns for... A good portion of my life and I'm, I've come to peace with that <laughs> yeah but you know what it's nice it's nice to to feel almost like the touch around you of, of people who inspired you mm -hmm. like I've got I've I've got um I've got some Elvira merch myself <laughs> you know I've got I've got little hints of um Jack Skellington as the Pumpkin King in my office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you always have that that little echo around you of yeah. um, influences, which again reminds me of Persona 5. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to play that at some point, aren't I? It's. I think you would dig it. For as much as I dig it, I think you would dig it. I think you would be super pleasantly surprised. Because like the entire okay. idea about Persona is um it's like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon <laughs> and visual novels all rolled up into one and it's based in the real world and all the monsters and spiritual creatures are based in actual folklore and literature like this the full historical mythological and fictional consciousness of man is at the disposal for the series um like they like uh the the characters for the current cast um their personas which are like your internal spirit made into this ultra powerful expressive spirit that works on your behalf it they take the form of fictional thieves gotcha like there's arsene who was um the uh, like the French Sherlock Holmes, mm -hmm. and then there was Carmen, who was apparently another huge figure. Um, one of the, and it's based off tarot for um a lot of the characters that you can build these social bonds with and these friendships with, and one of them, the end goal, if you progress all the way, is Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's it's this big, huge, really cool thing there. And um, I think Internet Historian just asked me about horror movies. And Do I, you like bad God horror movies? What's that? It, it, he asked if you like bad horror movies. Some of them, yeah. <laughs> Some of them are fun. <laughs> I... Oh, so and someone else was asking me something. Hold on, let me look. I can, I can find it. I accidentally closed the YouTube tab. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Let me get back up. I can do this. I can do this. Oh, what's my favorite music band? Uh, I don't have favorite bands. I have favorite albums. Um, because you know, I I really like bands that evolve over time to change their sound. Because like, that's something that bothers me about bands that release the same thing over and over. It's like, but I already had this album. You know what I mean? And so it's really not, even if I don't like the direction that a band goes, I'm okay with it. Cause it's like, well, I, I still have their old stuff. It didn't go anywhere. Um, my favorite albums in general, cause I'd have to give albums. Um, recently the ones that I've loved are casualties of cool. Obviously I, I showed that earlier on in the stream. I've got it right here. Um, that's one of my favorite albums. There are two albums by A Forest of Stars that really, like, speak to me. Um, 
Beware of the Sword You Cannot See, and Grave Mounds and Grave Mistakes. I showed you a little bit of Grave Mounds and Grave Mistakes, didn't I, Nick? I think so. There's there's stuff that you've definitely shown me. Yeah, cause it's the Grave Mounds and Grave Mistakes has the album cover that is like a miniature version of a London dock. Hmm. Like they actually built it. They built a tiny, a tiny stage, tiny set. Um, I've been really addicted to Futha by Heilung recently. Uh, Heilung being a sort of neo pagan uh, band who's excellent, Ooh. and then. Oh, you would... I didn't even think about this. You would love Heilung. I'm going to show that to you after stream as well, uh, before we start talking about work. Okay. Uh, because, oh my god, I think you're going to dig it. <laughs> I Okay, uh, let me think. In terms of albums. Uh, the Black Halo by Camelot. Oh, such a good album. Um... In Contact by Caligula's Horse recently is really, really good. Um, Caligula's Horse, I think, is someone that you mentioned to me. Yeah, I've mentioned Caligula's Horse. Yeah, because there was a song that reminded me of you by them. Uh, the Cannon's Mouth. That song reminded me of you. Just the tone of it. What else? Yeah, yeah I think that was the one. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. It, it's, it's a song with um, a spoken word poem. It's like a slam poem. Uh, the track before it is a slam poem, and it leads into the song. It's so good. Uh, and it works. It completely works in the context of the album, by the way. Hmm. Afro Man's Christmas album? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, I've literally never heard of this, but I'm, I'm going wasn't, to... Wasn't Afro Man the dude who made um, Because I Got High? <laughs> because I got high. Because I got high. Because I got high. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Good. Oh, that was years Yo, ago that I was introduced I, to that. I, you know, that can't hold a candle to yell motherfuckers don't even smoke crack, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that one, but that reminds me of the Left Rights, uh, the, the side project by uh, Steve Rye and um, Jimmy Urin from MSI, Mindless Self-Indulgence. Oh, God. Yeah, the... You, you remember uh, one of the videos that's related to option one that I gave you. Um, the, the, the same person made a music video. Oh, I, I, I've given too much yep. information. Um, MSI's side project. I, I, can't, I can't give too many details. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few things that I can't talk about right now. Actually, I just talked this morning with someone about something that's definitely happening that I'll tell you about after stream. That I'm excited to be a part of. Good stuff. Oh, I, I, I'm just excited. I'm, I'm doing stuff, right? I'm something that I really want to try doing more is voice acting. I keep saying that. Um, I just need to actually start reaching out to people and places to do some same. more. Same. Yeah. Same. I'm in the same boat. God, for for years, you know, I've had people tell me, "Get into voice acting. Get into voice acting. Why aren't you voice acting for stuff?" You could be a voice in this, a voice in that. I'm just sitting here like, okay, introduce me somehow. Mm. I can't, I can't just, and I don't want to, it, it's this hell of people telling you that and having an entire legion of viewers tell you that and then having your family and friends tell you that and then sitting here thinking, okay, but what's going to happen if I approach somebody and say, yeah, I'm so-and-so from YouTube. The first thing that you think they're going to think is, oh, look at this douchebag from YouTube who thinks he's hot and has a voice that he can jump, ju yeah. just jump into this. Yeah. I don't want that. Yeah, I don't exactly. Want that experience. It, it's, it's hard when you don't have a whole lot of ins because it very yeah. much is like a community. You got, you know, knowing people who know people. It's yeah. rough. Oh, and I realized I totally forgot one of the best albums ever made. Write this down, everyone. Clearing the Path to Ascend by Yob. Y-O-B, Yob, is the band name. Clearing the Path to Ascend by Yob is one of the best albums I've ever heard. It's doom metal, but it's extremely accessible doom metal, if that makes sense. It's Even if you're not into metal, you can enjoy it for what it I is. I have a friend who would dig that. Yeah. It's, mm. oh, Yob is so good. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm just it's thinking like, about all the bad... Music is one of those things that is really powerful for me. Oh, yeah. Listening 
I th like I get very nervous when I play music, but listening is really powerful. No, I feel the same way. It's you know sometimes I, <laughs> I this is gonna be a human thing, but it's one of those, um, <clears throat> it's one of those things that people I imagine don't talk about, but is universal. Is waking up with a song in your head, as if you left an iPod on in your brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no, I've I've woken up. Um, with songs in my head, and I've written them down, and I've like writ I've got them on the gurdy. There are a few songs that like I need to do something with. No, I mean like oh, um, just stuff that you've listened to. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, yeah. I I dream melodies sometimes, and I I That's write them cool. down, and some of them are really nice. It's like I didn't write this. <laughs> it's like I did, but I didn't. I would love to see a few of your past lives. <laughs> they're all mundane they're all just Bullshit. me sitting in front of a camera drinking tea the real question is how many of them were i in <laughs> and what role did i play that time no i like i I've, I've told you if if there if there is such a thing as past lives we've orbited each other oh yeah for a very long time mm. <laughs> and i need to I feel like such a fake metal fan when I say I haven't acquainted myself with Opeth beyond a few songs. Same with Tool. I'm finally listening to Tool. Tool is so good. Like, Tool I know they're good. good. I enjoy them. I just haven't taken the time to sit down and listen to them. Yeah. The hilarious thing, um, I don't know how anybody else here feels about the new Tool album, but it was a running gag in the metal community for the longest time about... Mm -hmm. The day that Tool will finally release a new yeah. album. Yes. And then they did. And then everybody listened to it. And like me and my friend who who knew that joke and we would hear that joke constantly from a DJ on um Sirius XM's Octane channel, Grant Random. Because he would always end his segment by taking a crack at Tool. Mm -hmm. And listening to the new album, we both just kind of looked at each other like, Yeah, it's Tool. It's not it's exciting, too. Tool. It's, I don't know what I expected. It just, it's a lot of tool. And mm -hmm. I don't know. And then we stopped and we didn't listen to it again. Well, that, that's, that's the problem, right? It's, and I was saying this earlier. I'm totally fine with bands moving on to different sounds because I still have the old albums. And if they're just, if they're not experimenting with their sound, then it's just the same album again. I don't care. I had that happen with Disturbed. I've I've been a Disturbed fan um, forever, and then right after they did Asylum, they took a hiatus, which mm -hmm. was like their fifth or sixth album. Um, and then when they came back a few years ago, it was exciting. But then listening to that, and then listening to some of the latest stuff that they did, they they've changed it up after that album from a couple of years ago but listening to that one i just felt like it's it's just a continuation of the old stuff mm -hmm. um from a few years ago like the last album and the one before that not not much has changed it's is it a new album <laughs> the words are different some of the sounds are different right but i it ain't got me mm -hmm. it's then again like they're the, the, I, I just feel like the second worst thing you can do is stagnate. The first worst yeah. thing you can do is genericize your music. Nowhere is that better exemplified than In Flames. Like, I, I still cannot believe I've heard that. that I've I, heard I still that. cannot believe that Modern In Flames is the same band that wrote Black Ash Inheritance. And, or uh, just the Jester Race. I know the it is. Last both. time I heard an In Flames song, it was on Octane. I, th I think, and listening to the lyrics, it was boring. Mm. It was it was really simple. Yeah, in flames. So here's the thing, in flames, they were one of the original melodic death metal bands, and they're just that they were amazing. You know, they they I don't know if they got better, but they definitely were like always good. And then they made Cloud Connected, and it's like, all right, they're taking, you know, the melodic death metal, and they're fusing it with, like, a more accessible pop metal sort of thing. And it's like, all right, there's some great songs on here. The title track is awesome. Uh, and then it was all downhill from there. 
Yeah. It's really just, oh, it's some, just like, somebody... they, they just sound like generic American metal now. Like, I, I don't need more kill switch engage. Yeah. And I know people are going <laughs> to say, hey, they sound completely different. The similarities are there. It's, you know what I mean. It's the, it's just frustrating and it's boring. I, I find a lot of American metal pretty boring. To be frank, you can, like you can, you can like, hear trends sometimes yeah. on the radio with new stuff coming out. You can hear the trend, and you know exactly where it's coming from. Uh, speaking of which, somebody in the chat just mentioned a band that I do know and have known for a few years. Actually, Theory of a Dead Man asking me about their new stuff. Honestly, listening to it, I can tell that producers got to them in the studio yeah. and asked them to try doing stuff that sounded like pop radio songs. I can mm -hmm. hear it, and I don't respect it. I, I gotcha. It's... I, I think that... And I mean, th this is something that I think a lot of creatives understand, is you find success, and then you get scared. I know that that happened to me for Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm just like, oh god, I, I, I was afraid to experiment and change things up when really that's the last like the last thing i should be doing is just sticking to formula and that's why with the new videos like especially the one after this one is going to be really weird um especially in terms of structure and it's it, it's going to be it's still going to be down the rabbit hole but it's going to play with the form quite a bit and i'm i just do like simply making that decision has really invigorated me and giving me a lot, a lot of new energy. It sets you free. It sets yeah. you free when you recognize that you've been in the same place for a little bit and you need to take the power back and do something different. That mm. was, I, I'm sure you've heard me say it before, is House of Leaves gave me my soul back. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm reading it. Felt. It's, I, I, I'm reading it and I'm, I'm enjoying it and I can see why. It's, as someone who is living so much long after house of leaves was published it's like some of some of the stuff he's doing it's like okay yeah I've, excuse me i've seen this before but it still works so well even if it's like not it was original at the time but even if it's not like super unique anymore the way he's using the tools is so powerful and like so sort of tongue-in-cheek it's just enjoyable and one of the first ones to do it and then, and that's that's always amazing is um i've had that experience too uh on nightmind when looking into some arg and nonfiction stuff of you you know where a lot of the trends come from you know right. where a lot of sure. the binary the bi <laughs> backwards I, I... messaging <laughs> bullshit comes from yeah but when you find the originator you snap awake and it's like i've seen this all before but i'm seeing who made it now yeah. And it's actually putting a smile on my face. Mm -hmm. And it feels good because I'm seeing it in the context it arrived. Right. Dead air. I oh. No, I I'm I'm teasing. I'm just teasing. I, no, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I just think I just that meme is so funny. I can't get yeah. over it. No, I saw a comment that said, Wasn't Maynard focused on Eat the Element? You mean Eat the Elephant, that perfect <laughs> circle album, which by the way, I picked that up too. And there is some stuff on there that I liked, but at the time it was another album that, you know, I listened to it and then I forgot about it. And my friend, my friend Corey Croft from the band of Phantoms, who did the music for my House of Leaves series, said the same thing. I hate when that happens. Like I will pick up albums sometimes and think, okay, are we going to get another one where it's going to be that I'm just rolling this all month and it becomes another seasonal play for me? And it only happens like half the time now. And that sucks. It sucks to pick up an album and listen to it maybe once or twice and then leave it in the car and I never play it again. And I think about it, it's like, well, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just didn't take. Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. I... <sighs> right, I, I was going to mention um, before. Shoot, what was I... I, I'm getting lost. Let me let me pour my tea. You know what? I'll 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 be able to think when I have tea in my hand. It's okay. Let's let's do that, and I'll see how long the delay is on YouTube. Okay, sure. <laughs> it's so fun. It's so fun to see you moving around at random times, 
and then and you're talking to me here and i know it's not syncing up at all even if i can't see your face <laughs> and yes for those of you in the in the chat saying that you still need to read house mm -hmm. of leaves please do this is this year is it's honest to god 20th anniversary of publication and house of leaves i've had i've had some stuff on night mind where it's affected people and i've gotten personal messages but nothing has ever been as impactful for people as house of leaves was i've never had so many viewers tell me that they cried or that it did to them exactly what i warned them it would do it's it's powerful i i i'm excited to get deeper into it uh, the moment that i realized that daniel Luski, right so by the way um i met up i think i told you this already um i met up with my old professor from osu a little while ago we sat down and had lunch and just chatted about where both of our lives were going it was it was very surreal to talk to a professor like a friend because like he was very much a mentor to me um, mm -hmm. he, he got me into cyber text. He's the one who got me into it. Um, <laughs> and I did independent study with him. He, oh. um, I, I told him, it's like, I'm finally reading house of leaves. And he went, ah, Daniel Lusky. He was just yeah. really, he was just very, very satisfied. Dip hand in tea real quick to check if it's hot. Yeah. Hold on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> My hands are clean. Don't worry. I'm good. <laughs> no, no. You see, you need to literally tea bag with your tea bag. In a... <laughs> Mike made that joke already, you asshole. Did he? <laughs> yes. Damn it. He was talking about how there are taste buds on your balls. Yeah, that that came out a while back, and I don't, I, I don't know if I believe it because I haven't tried, and I'm not going to. <laughs> it doesn't work. Just, just by the way, it's one of those dumb pop <laughs> science things where they're like, oh, you, you, you taste things with your balls. <laughs> the latest biological factoid from 4chan. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody out there one day dipping their balls in a jar of mayonnaise like, holy shit, I can taste it. <laughs> 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 This is who we are off camera, people. This is... <laughs> I'm sorry. This is who we are. Oh, no. I am no, the people... silliest bitch when I'm off the mic. Oh, he is. No, he... <laughs> no, you're like, I'd say you're toning it down a little bit for being on the camera. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, you know, I can't, I can't be completely unhinged. We are, we are having tea time here. <laughs> right. We have to keep things centered <laughs> yeah. oh good i'm glad that we have people in chat that have tried dipping their balls in soy sauce and tea of all the flavors for your balls garlic boo <laughs> all these flavors and you chose to be balls <laughs> That remind that reminds me of a joke that I heard once about about Tool actually, um, somebody just saying to another person trying to defend Maynard James Keenan, and you're just jealous because Maynard can taste colors and you can't because <laughs> <laughs> he's got synesthesia. I have I have like, another friend uh, who has synesthesia, and she like it, it's so interesting uh, listening to her talk about music because music is almost a sacred experience for her it's great th this is also um this is also the woman who could sing the entirety of um what is it uh, the death clock musical like the episode of death clock that's just a musical um <laughs> death star rising i think it is i need to watch more death death the clock only, the only stuff i only remember a few things from it and one of them is banana sticker yeah oh my god that that episode was amazing so here's the thing right i remember watching it in high school and being like this is like i'm enjoying this but this is really stupid and then i watched it again later uh after i'd graduated from college and i was like this this is a lot more intelligent than i remember 
and also it's hilarious. Like it's still funny. <laughs> yeah. I I think that's true for a lot of adult swim stuff. It's hard to really appreciate like it's funny haha random when you're little and then you grow up and you watch it again and it's like, oh, this is why this spoke to me so much. Like you you recognize the themes a little bit more. I have I have a fond memory. Actually, I've got many, many fond memories of um being younger and uh turning on a TV late at night when I shouldn't have in an area of the house that I shouldn't have even been in, this tiny little TV and watching uh adult swim stuff, having the volume super low so I wouldn't get caught, having no idea what I was watching. But one of them was twelve ounce mouse. And I love showing people now 12 ounce mouse and just getting their what the hell is this reaction to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and even that, like, it is lol random core of, of that of that time period in the 2000s, uh, adult swim style. Mm -hmm. But even watching that, I, I got the same feeling of, you know what? This is making a little bit of sense now, actually. As stupid as it is, as stupid mm -hmm. as it is. Internet historians making a joke, and I think I'm missing it. Speaking of synesthesia, Maybe. Monday is white, Tuesday is yellow, Wednesday is blue. I'm, I, I'm missing something. Monday for is sure. blue. <laughs> blue Monday, baby. Orgy. Look it up. Uh, what? I'm compl I'm even more out of the loop now. I was like, I, I was in gear trying to figure out what he was talking about, and then I just hear you say orgy. <laughs> it's a band. There's a band oh. called Orgy. Okay. Who, who did a song called Blue Monday. Okay. I And <laughs> it, it just it kicks ass. Okay. Okay, so there is logic. You're not you're not just trying to slide subconscious messages to me. <laughs> no, I mean I I I am constantly, you know that, but not on the this exact moment now. Oh, people were saying <laughs> Nightmind Metal. Fun fact, I used to be a metal vocalist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I told Nick. Did, did I ever show you? Yes. Yeah, I showed you. I have. I can. Sh I, if you guys want, I can. I, I put together a vocal sample of my growling, um, because in college I helped out. Um, I, w I was in a metal band for two years, just in high school. We never really did anything because it was hard to really get invested when we knew that we were going to be like running off in separate directions in a few years, but. I, I was a vocalist for that band for two years. I was the reason that we practiced, damn it. It was once a week for like six hours we had band practice. And then during summer we did it like twice a week. Yeah. I know it's a cover, guys, but it's the best cover, okay? You know what? Sometimes bands come along and they do covers that are better than the original and then they own the song. Yeah. Such is the case yeah. with Blue Monday. And um, You can fight me forever, but I will fight back. A really great example, Love Like Blood by um, by Cybreed. Cybreed covered that song, and it was just better. Love Like Blood, huh? Yeah, I, I'd highly recommend you look up the song Love Like Blood, uh, that, the version that Cybreed did. I'm not going True. to do the roar he, like on the mic. I'll I'll put on the song. Mm. You, can't, you can't just ask somebody to, to whip out one of their growls. Especially no, when it's been dormant. Everyone, everyone always no. I I can do it. It's the the problem is that it would sound stupid, like metal it growls. Sounds stupid about the music. Yeah. Yes, no. You, you know, I I've told this to you before. I'll tell chat. You know how there's always that one dude in American Idol who's like, I'm gonna do a death growl and it's gonna be really cool, but there's no backing music and so they just sound like a dying pig. Yeah, that's that's it. Here, you know what? Let me let me look it up right now. Uh, there we go. Okay, here I'll I'll put it on not too loud. Release the kitties. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so I, I helped my buddy out with a music mixing project for college, and this is this is some of what we did. Okay, there we go. That's 
It's me, I promise. Band record everything in two boxes, okay? Yeah. I, I had some pretty fun stuff. And then the dirty kicks. <laughs> um. So this um. So the dude that um I did these songs with. He um what he did for some of it is he add he had multiple of my voice going. Like I, I recorded multiple of the track. There's one where it's just my voice and he didn't add any effects on it. And that's actually the last one. This one. Oh no, he added um a little bit of vocoder onto it. are saying they want full versions of the songs. <laughs> I'm happy with this song. I, I I wrote the lyrics to all the songs too. This is the song I really was proud of. I should really hit up Garside again to see if he wants to make some more music. That'd be Easy. really fun. Do you talk to people from like back in the day before you you started doing YouTube, and like do do they actively? Because I've got I've got people, of course, I've got friends who who knew me before Nightmind and and know me now, and it just it's it's fun to to talk to them and just reminisce from stuff back in the day, especially when they were there for a lot of the stuff that happened. People, oh hold on, people are asking for you know what? I'll I'll show you guys the album. Uh, my buddy put together a whole album. It's a combination of like black, like atmospheric black metal, sort of, and um, like just and just atmospheric noise, sort of, sort of. You'd have to ask him for what he refers to it as. Uh, let me see. Call uh, the album was called the Innsmouth Look, I think. Hey, cool reference. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the songs is called Yog Sothoth. I wrote the mm -hmm. lyrics. I let me see if I can find it. Oh, did I ever tell you in there my reading what um got it what Here Lovecraft go. uh said that the actual Cthulhu um pronunciation is? Yeah, Cthulhu. It is the C and the T are pronounced at the same time. Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yeah. Cthulhu. Yeah. 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 Cthulhu. Yeah. 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 I remember um, that last song in that vocal sample that I gave, that, that wasn't all one song. It was multiple songs that I cut together to kind of, like, show off. Um, I, so, let me see. I think I can remember the lyrics off the top of my head because it was written when I was having a, like, severe existential crisis. It was, um, oh, God, I can do this. I wake to find myself anew, recall my old state, and to myself pontificate a consensus of a bifurcated self, my body as a tomb and my mind a womb. Further subdivision, I can't find myself. Then it's, um, hunger creeps upon my flesh and I can't force my indifference. Bacteria demand their due, I wake to find myself anew. And that's basically the whole idea being, like, the separation of soma and psyche is impossible and i was really like i was terrified by the fact it's like oh my god you know cuz there's there's something to be said for the peace that comes when you're thinking like oh my mind is separate from my body but really it's not even hunger affects the way that you think like have you ever been so hungry that you can't think how do you yep. deal with that 
it, they're not great <laughs> lyrics, but it's like they're okay. I like them. I think they're dope. Ah, they are some metal lyrics. Yeah, they're they're very <laughs> metal. They're they're not great. My poetry was never good, but it's like that. It was very. It's those lyrics are very emblematic for that period of my life. That was cool though. <laughs> that that's it's stuff that I need to go back to. I used to write short stories too. Like, but. It's been so long because I've been so focused on everything else. Uh, you never stop being a writer. You just have other things that you got to do instead of writing. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm having fun <laughs> on like other projects, just like sort of stretching out, trying new things like that's that's the trick, right? Is you always got to try new things. Maybe maybe I can't do them professionally yet, but it's nice to build skills. Yeah. The way I see it is that people like you and I feel okay with what we're doing, even if it's not writing or making our own stuff, because we're still storytelling. That's the core of it. Like, mm -hmm. I, I had that reconciliation with myself years back about um, Night Mind and why suddenly everything felt okay, even though it wasn't the dream TM. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> because it's like, even though you're not writing... And even though it's not yours, you are still telling stories. You are still propagating creativity and imagination. It's like, there's the key then. Yeah. If I, as long as I'm telling a story or creating an imaginative or immersive experience, it doesn't matter what form it takes. Right. It's some of you is going to end up in it one way or another it's which is kind of funny because like i try to erase my existence as much as possible not not com not literally but getting people to focus on the work itself and you know they they don't think about what of me is reflected in it but it's there yeah metal collab with varg skeletor joel if you're listening man yeah sure hit me up I'll give you some Gertie. I'll give you some vocals. Just hit me up. Dudes just write a damn story. This is kind of sad to hear, homies. <laughs> oh, somebody asked me the dream, TM. Yeah. Um, if you had told me when I was younger that I'd be doing YouTube instead of being a novelist, I might have died right then and there. Uh, because that's what I was dead set on. <laughs> two and a half novels, two and a half novels, a little smattering of short stories, uh, a bunch of rewrite attempts of stuff before because I was dead set on fixing something until it worked. And that mm -hmm. is what my history was before Night Mocked, along with some other little things in between. But yes, that is what the dream was, TM. And that's that's why I'm in the place I am now and know so much about storytelling and character study and, you know, always fight for in the creation of a project of make them believe because the number one adage that I learned in my studies of writing was uh, can't just write what happens you gotta make the reader believe it's... that's the trick to it you gotta trick them into thinking that the fiction is legitimate it's like Stephen King says you hide the truth inside the lie yeah I'm there's there's a really great example of this. Hold on. Um, a friend was sending me music. He's trying to get me into um, rap. Uh, he sent me Knees on the Ground by Clipping. And that was really, really powerful. Um, because it the chorus sort of gives the theme. And then each verse gives um, a sort of stream of consciousness of the person taking in um, everything that's happening at that moment um, and often with just images not literally saying what's going on but taking a moment to give the images of what they're experiencing and like looking at uh, the pavement on the ground darker because pavement always is darker when it's wet it's mm -hmm. just thinking of like these thoughts that really don't that make sequential sense but you don't r always realize you're thinking when you're experiencing them i really like that kind of writing i think it's extremely powerful it is it's it's more true to life than most people realize mm -hmm. the, the trick is uh to really good writing is 
rec is recognizing the ways that people think even if they don't realize it and telling it to them. Because people don't always recognize how they work and how they interface with things and even with like uh, media and even with life. You, it is your job as the creator to recognize how they interact with media and how they even experience life and show it to them. That's a fact. Oh, it's uh, just spawning somebody in the comment here. Uh, Linda Beamer. I wanted to be a writer as a child, now a filmmaker, but I often find myself unable to or experience some sort of art block slash writer's block. How do you guys deal with that? Um, I've actually talked about this before in my how to make a web series uh, mm. series <laughs> that I really need to follow up on and finally make a part piece for. Um, you're going to get a thousand ideas as a creator. Not all of them belong to you. The ideas that won't leave you alone, though, or the ideas that excite you the most, those are the ideas that you're being called upon to get to. Right. It's not It's not an act of... I can't fathom the idea of how people sit down at a canvas in any medium that they, that they perform in and force something out or actively think about what they're going to make because for me that's never been how it works and for a lot of people i i know and have studied they, that's not how it works the idea comes to you it is fishing like david yeah. lynch describes that's it as accurate. fishing you have to wait for the fish and you're not going to keep everything you catch but there is going to be a moment where you get exactly what you need and what belongs to you. And that is the one that you take home. Now, I, I, I will add a caveat to that because I don't entirely agree. Mm -hmm. I truly and wholeheartedly believe that there is no such thing as a good idea, only a well-executed one. <laughs> yeah. I've said before, there's no such thing as a bad idea. There's just bad execution. <laughs> I think that there are bad ideas, certainly, but I think that more often it's bad execution. Yeah. As, as a general rule, it's usually bad execution. It's... So don't worry about finding the perfect story. Just focus on telling the story as well as you can. And, and I will agree. I, I think that what you said is still accurate. Um... Specifically, in the sense that... Hmm. Let, let me formulate my thoughts. Dead air. You, like, there might be plenty of ideas, but you need to find the ones that you can execute in particular. You in particular can execute this idea. Someone else might be able to take an idea that you can't do anything with and run with it and you know, make something really powerful with it. But you need to find what speaks to you and what gets you excited, what ideas get you interested. And it doesn't have to be the best idea in the world. It just has to be meaningful and impactful for you. That... And you don't have to make a blockbuster out of it either. Right. Um, I'll. You just reminded me of something that was my inhibitor uh, a lot of time when trying to create something. Mm -hmm. I... I never don't have ideas. What I've always had is this insane perfectionist, it must be over the top masterwork out of the gate mentality. Right. When that is absolute bullshit and that is the number one thing that will inhibit you. You don't need a grand slam every single time you go up to bat. You just got to do the best with what you can make in the moment. Mm -hmm. Progress, the not perfection. Somebody said it perfectly mm -hmm. in the comments. Yeah. That, it, it's a good mantra. By the way, I, I want to point out, um, there's sometimes we'll just stop talking and there will be dead air. That's just kind of how Nick and I talk. Like w whenever we do talk, we it's okay to be comfortable in silence with someone. And I appreciate yeah. that I can have that with you. Yeah, no, I've always felt that. That's mm -hmm. I think that's another thing that a lot of people don't get is like. People, I think, are too conditioned to think that they have to fill the space. No. no. <laughs> no. All the best relationships, you get to a moment of realizing that you can just sit there and you don't have to say shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
or you can just agree with what they say or just say yeah or you don't have to carry on an idea or a conversation forever yeah. <laughs> internet historian just make something bad then criticize and re-edit and criticize and re-edit it again and again until it's good enough yeah until that's it meets cycle. your standard yeah that's how you do it you just yeah that's that's actually not how i write i know every other writer that i know writes a rough first draft and then goes back and adds and edits my first draft is always really close to my final draft be i just write it very very slowly <laughs> I'm the only kinda, person I've I know. I'm the only person I know who writes like that. I have I have a mix of that. When I back when I was writing writing, I would do that where I would backpedal and chip away at it. Yeah. And then review it and then carry on. It would be first draft round and then second draft round in the same same go. Mm. Now with Nightmind scripting. I I do it all in one go, and I usually do have one or two moments of stopping and then rewriting, and then at the end, if I'm feeling like okay, let's let's really comb through this, then I'll go ahead and give it a comb over, mm -hmm. and <laughs> um, try and go through it and and touch it up a bit. But there aren't many major changes whatsoever. Usually, I'm just looking for things to tear out of it, um, useless words. Right. Things that I've yes. already said and then said again in a different form, which is a bad habit that I've always had. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lots of adverbs usually just means you're using bad verbs. It means that it, a lot of what I'll catch is moment because I think about I, I write the way that I'm going to speak with a yes. lot of it. Yeah. Writing a script is different uh, from writing something that's meant to be read. Yeah. And then you realize reading it of uh, that oh hold on when people are speaking they suck <laughs> you use so many needless stupid words yes for instance i just said needless stupid words if i were writing this i would have to go in and erase the word stupid because yes. why i already said needless you already said I mean, needless yeah it, it, it's plenty it's enough of a descriptor yeah exactly so that's that's a constant with my script go in rip out the crap every single time Mm -hmm. I have a bad habit of using the same word uh, in quick succession. Like one sentence, I'll use a word, and then the next sentence, I'll use the same word. That's my worst. Sometimes those slip into the script, and it like I think it slipped into the final draft of the SCP Foundation video. But of course, that was back when I was only taking two weeks per video, and oh my god, they were they were rough. Those those early <laughs> down the rabbit holes. I know they might look okay, but you look a little bit closer and you see the cracks. <laughs> same for me mm -hmm. every single time you feel that and then even in like the new ones you screw things up i don't nearly so much anymore the next mistakes video is going to be quite trim and i'm happy about that uh, most of my next mistakes video which probably is going to come after the next video um, is just going to be a lot of i i kind of wish i'd have done it this way but like the facts are okay Right. I, I know the one the one thing that everyone wants me to fix is like in Temple OS, you said that a milling machine was a 3D printer. Actually, don't you know the difference between additive and subtractive? It's like, yes, I I know just people know what a 3D printer is. And so I just went into that. Pe people can visualize a 3D printer. So I just use that and imagery. It's like, trust me, I know. the <laughs> hmm? <laughs> It's like, I know the difference. It was. Yeah. You obviously knew the difference, so you didn't need that clarification. Yeah. Right? But if someone looks deeper into 3D printers, they will discover that, you know, the difference between additive and subtractive. Anyway, it was a tactical decision. The Pedans got annoyed, I, but it was doing its job. Sometimes you, you have to make compromises like that. Yeah. And then you sit there and you look at the comments and go, Thank you, Peanut Gallery. Yep. How observant, how incredibly helpful to this entire topic. <laughs> <laughs> hey nexpo being too wordy and over explaining has been a huge issue with myself lately it's easy to lose trust that your audience will understand something exactly as you intend it's and then sometimes you look at the comment section and people ask questions of you for things that you didn't over explain and you realize they're asking that and not understanding because you thought well last time that i tried to over explain in order to get it through to people you know, they bitched about it. So you take it out, and then you have the same problem. 
So you don't win either way. I'll tell you this, Nexpo, you probably already figured this one out in your career. Once you're past about 10,000 subscribers, you no longer have the aura of winning the entire room. No. People suddenly can't. realize, you know what? You're big enough for me to throw rocks at as if you're not a human being. So they'll begin to do so. Yeah, it's... But, like... I, I know that some people struggle with it. I was talking about this yesterday, but, like... If if you're in it for long enough, and if if you're just... You've been a creative for long enough, negative criticism kind of stops bothering you so much. Maybe that's just... Yeah, because I, I know we're both kind of that way, where it's like negative criticism doesn't really phase either of us so much anymore. Yeah, I've got for for every ten comments tell it telling me that they fell asleep to my voice or they fell in love. I've got ten people saying, "What the fuck is wrong with your voice? Jesus Christ, stop it!" <laughs> yeah, know? it's, it's things just... like that. You never win the whole room. Yeah, well, some like I I've talked about this before, but there are three kinds of criticism. Uh, the first kind of criticism is fuck you. Um, yeah. and it's it's not about the work. <laughs> it's not about anything. They just, they're not giving you anything. Uh, it's just a personal attack. So, you know, you can just kind of ignore those. Uh, you have the second kind of criticism is I personally did not like this. And if you get a massive number of people that are saying I personally did not like this, then you might have a problem that you want to address. Um, but you, you always take that with a grain of salt. The third kind is, this didn't work. Maybe you should consider fixing it, right? Like, you should, you should change this. And often, that's the, these are the more technical uh, pieces of feedback. And it's like, okay, yeah, next time I need to change this. Um, and sometimes those can each masquerade as one another. So, for example, someone said, this didn't work might actually mean, I don't like this. Right, you have to be able to parse that out, and sometimes they're combined. Like, so you messed up this fact. Also, go fuck yourself. Yeah. And so it's like, take the first part, ignore the second part. <laughs> and for the and for the latter two groups, you always have to look at the percentage of okay, who wrote and posted this comment hoping to score internet points. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. A lot. Nine in the afternoon. I wish I were a real ghoul. <laughs> you remember that comment, right? What is the fuck, you are a ghoul? <laughs> I read that to you, right? No, I don't believe so. What? Okay, I, I'm sorry everyone who was here yesterday and read it. Oh, someone also asked uh, if I read Super Chats. Yes, I will read Super Chats at the end. Also, hi, Atlas. Atlas just Super Chatted. The mad person. Okay, let me I find it. I love this person's name in the, in the chat. Slumpy man in the coochie suit. <laughs> There's what, some good What names. does that even mean? There are some good names. Okay, let me. I, I know that a lot of you have heard this already. Nick, I'm amazed that I haven't read this to you before. This is my favorite comment that I've ever received. I just unsubbed. I was not able to imagine how pathetic you look before. This is all my mistakes video. <laughs> bye bye. How can you have the balls to juge? You are as sexy as Chris Chan. Disgusting face, disgusting mind. <laughs> Not funny anymore since you are garbage. Just hide yourself. What is the fuck? You are a ghoul. <laughs> it was one of the early comments on my first mistakes video, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> the best part about this? It's edited. <laughs> Oh my god. I, I've gotten people asking me to call my fans ghouls. And it's like, yeah. Oh boy. I'm amazed I never read that to you. It's my favorite <laughs> comment. Holy crap. That's Hall of Fame right there. Whoa, 50 from Jake. Thank you so much. Seriously. Thank you to everyone who's super chatting. Don't worry. We'll get to all the super chats at the end. Why are you ghoul? <laughs> Who says I'm ghoul? You are a ghoul. Freddy's not a ghoul. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a ghoul. The hands. No. It's the hands. No. It, it, it's the spider fingers. Spider psycho. Spider psycho. Oh, there's a reference that I'd be impressed if anyone got. It's Treasure Planet, by the way. I love that Damn, movie. Damn, that's right a now. deep cut. <laughs> I, I, I want to know what he edited. What did he edit? 
Like, did he go back and say, I forgot to call him a ghoul? <laughs> Oopsie daisy. Oh, I, I remember something I was going to say earlier. If your next mistakes video is really that trim, then just use the rest of the air time to to uh, have a little press conference about mistakes in, in hindsight. So, in addition to my content, I would like to list the mistakes I've made in things on Twitter. I've missed opportunities to jump in on. Uh, there are several memes that I wish I had retweeted <laughs> <laughs> back when they were popular. Uh, for instance, I love that little picture. Don't talk me. I Angie. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't get in on that. <laughs> and then, then I'm just quiet for a while. Yeah. Dead air. <laughs> These are the hashtags that I believe I should have partaken in. <laughs> <laughs> These are the problematic likes that I did not make and then immediately unlike in a panic. You missed that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. We've been going for a while. God, I, these always go a lot longer than I expect. We've been going for like two hours now. I think that now might be a time to a good time to wrap things up. How do you feel? Yeah, we can do that. Also, someone, if you, someone, get me in contact with v Vin Joel. I seriously, actually, unironically, would totally be willing to make something with him, even if it's just me adding some vocals onto a track. Totally down. <laughs> Internet historian said, correction video. There are no corrections. Thanks. I'm Roll perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm perfect. Goodbye. <laughs> I love it. Now, we're the ghoul gang. It's good. <laughs> I approve. Let, let's check out the super chats. I know that there were some that were directed at you, so let's go ahead and go Ooh. through those. Ooh, woo. Mackenzie Fleetwood just given a cup of tea. Hell yeah. Thank you. Eric Mendoza. I'm the Joker, baby. <laughs> I'm I'm the Joker, bitch. Ghoulie Gang remix soon, please. <laughs> Thanks, Internet Historian. Leo the Bum Tickler with an excla <laughs> with, with an exclamation mark. Shame on you for getting tea out of a plastic bag. Man, I just... I go to the dump and I do what I can. When are you going to get the fancy stuff like pu'er? Yeah, I already answered I, I answered this earlier. I, I have some pu'er that I will be making. Probably. Doodle Will. Hey, Fred, know anything about true capitalist radio? Yes. Um, I am aware of him. I need, I've sort of looked up a little bit of information on him. I will probably eventually cover him one day. Lou says, Can you read something in your sonic voice? <laughs> You're welcome. Reckless as fuck, rip Joe Rogan. Oh, right. He he did a political thing and people don't like it. Is Where that do you what want the reference rip? is? Huh? How hard is it going to be? Is it going to be like paper or is it going to be like a uh, sheet of plastic? Excuse me? Oh, god damn it. They told us to rip Joe right, Rogan. I, it took me a moment. I just... The wires were not connecting in my brain. It's okay. <laughs> Sweetheart Peach. Love you both. Two favorites of mine. What a treat. I'm so glad. I'm glad. Thank you, dear. Kakaitis Media. Kakitas, Kakitas. Hey, you guys should collab and make it down the rabbit hole on the Slenderverse, focused on the behind the scenes and how the creators made their series. It's interesting to see a character developed by so many artists. Um, I mentioned before, I'm like a long time ago. I'm not really doing any more. Um, I'm not doing any more collaborations on down the rabbit hole, at least in terms of uh, voice. I'm not getting anyone else's voice on, probably. There's one person that I might in the future get to read some quotes who has a voice that's similar enough to mine that it would work. But I think people come and they expect one particular voice. And if there's another there for too long, then um, it's just un it's it's not what people come to the channel for. And it's it's one of the tricks of working in YouTube that I had to learn the hard way. 
Uh, uh, as for as for me, yeah, you know, I have had the idea that it is a significant thing um, to have this field and have so many people wrapping up. I think in the future, once Adam Rosner wraps up with Tribe Twelve, and uh, the timing feels right, it would be nice to actually have more of a documentary approach to sit down with everybody mm -hmm. and capture a picture of that time. Yeah. Because it was significant. It really was. And I'd, I'd love to have that, if if only for Night Month. Mm -hmm. Tom Finton. This ARG is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends! Raid the hot dark fantasy RPG that's taken the mobile Stop. world by storm. <laughs> Have you heard about the Battle Pass? <laughs> Why would I want to play a game that has an automated mode? Why would I play if I'm not playing it? Sorry, oh, yeah, I'm just that like three daddies in it that you can collect and it. You say stop, stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> I have that problem with clicker games. It's like, why why would I play a game where it just plays itself? Unless, I, there are some that, like, the whole purpose is, like, here here's the power of exponents, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we, have, we have Raid Historian right here. I, my, my favorite gag that you did was, what was it? Like, sign up using this code and get 1,000 free silver. Oh, no, that's too much. 500 free silver. <laughs> that killed me that reminds me um internet historian because of because of how long i've known fred and how much i know fred it has kicked my ass to see all the ways you shoved his face in video <laughs> i've had moments ass obviously <laughs> you you know you know graffy um my my boyfriend yeah, yeah, of course he's, he's watched videos <laughs> where he just suddenly starts laughing and he calls me over and he says, do you see it? And I stare <laughs> and it becomes a game of find the Fred face. <laughs> it's like shitty. Where is Waldo? <laughs> oh my God. Internet historian is always very kind about it though. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's actually a very polite boy. I know he doesn't always see me, but he is. He, uh, I believe it. He's he's always he's always nice about it. Don't worry, <laughs> it's 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 fine. That that that's our secret chat. It's it's fine. Camoing him and then showing him two days before the video goes up. Like yeah, so I was <laughs> sometimes I'll, I'll I'll check out Internet Historian's video early, right? To to like give him feedback, um, and <laughs> he never tells me. He never tells me that it's coming. <laughs> Especially the last one. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> it's it's good don't 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 worry <laughs> some of them are real like they take me by surprise every time okay <laughs> basconium we still have quite a few super chats to get through let's let's do this here we go basconium asks what do you think of robert evans host of the behind the bastards podcast and jake hanrahan's buddy I'm not familiar with the podcast. I, I've heard of it. I know about it. I know what it's about. Um, I just haven't listened to it. Like, there's lots of... There's so much media that I still need to consume, right? Consume... What was it? The Consumer. Where it's Movie Bob's face on it. Instead of, instead of the Coomer. It's the <laughs> Consumer. Buy product and then get excited for next product. Shallow she says both daddies talking to each other. Eight W eight. Eight weight. I, I choose to pronounce it eight weight. I pronounce it eight weight. Okay, too. okay, gotcha. <laughs> Talons of Water, are you familiar with the webcomic relief? I've heard of it. Another one of those things that I just really need to That's like, one of my dear friends, into. Riser. Um he was okay. actually my first YouTube friend. Yes, right! No, I remember in the video. You suggested him, like in the your here are the other YouTubers that I like. You suggested him, didn't you? Yeah, he's yes. great to watch. He has one of the strangest, cozy, long watch atmosphere effects that I've ever seen, 
and it's incredible to me. I have so many good memories of just sitting down and binging webcomic relief. And I get to have a touch of that every time he's made something new. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, Riser's great. All right. I can, th this is fantastic. I'm getting so many steeps out of these leaves, though I think that they might be nearing the end of their life. We'll see. I think it's because I use so many leaves. Like, that's the thing, right? You guys remember when there was, there was just a little pile at the bottom? Now the leaves have completely filled up the cup. Because they've all expanded. Check this out. Yeah, see? They just unfurl. It's cool. Some person says, as a fellow tea enthusiast, I love your tea set. Also, your content is fantastic. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you for being patient with me while I take goddamn forever to make videos. <laughs> I, um, the tea set that I have, by the way, is super simple. Um, the tea tray was something that Ryan got me from China, so this is special. And also, I wanted to point out, I need to tell Ryan, the tea tray that he got me is actually really nice. Because the wood uh, on top, it's not bamboo, it's wood. I, I don't think it's bamboo. It doesn't look like bamboo. Um, but it it's in three layers, and the layers are... Um, the top layer is striated like this way uh vertically the second layer is striated horizontally and the third layer is uh, striated vertically again and that's to help prevent warping so this is a tea tray that is specifically designed to prevent warping which is a constant problem with tea trays so Ooh. quality stuff uh but this like the steeper and the cup th both of these together were like 12 bucks you can find these anywhere these are super cheap just google tea tasting set and you can get it very easy. They're, they're fantastic. Um, the white, the really sort of bright white of the cup really lets you appreciate the color of the tea. And uh, looking at the color of the tea can help you determine like, oh, this was maybe a little bit strong. It helps you visually sort of work out how you want to steep the leaves. And you can sort of tell by the color. It's like, oh, I screwed up this. <laughs> I screwed this up a little bit. Uh, you can use it as one of the gauges alongside the flavor. Oh. Brandon Krantz says, I love your videos. Can't wait for the next one, but take your time. Have fun, man. Don't worry. You do not have to wait very long. I This video took inordinately long. A lot of it really was burnout. I burnt out really bad last year. It's in like three and a half years of straight down the rabbit hole with like no time off was brutal no weekends but beyond that it was it was bad i i didn't want to take vacations because i felt guilty now i recognize that's not really sustainable so i'm trying to be a little bit more sustainable uh, because it's it's not enough to just work hard because if you burn out as a creative it's hard to get the same level of work it's if you burn out as a creator, then your work is probably going to suffer. There are some people who can fight that, but like, I'm not one of them. And I've so, been through it. Yeah, you, you have to sort of strategize how to, you know, make sure that you don't exhaust yourself so that you can keep making the same level of content. It's been a long time. Yeah. Kippy Draws. What do y'all think of Invader Zim? Rewatched it recently and I just adore it. It really formed my childhood. I did not... I, I've said this multiple times on stream and I know people are hearing me say the same... Some people are hearing me say the same thing over and over, but I didn't grow up with cable or satellite. I just had broadcast, like your, your basic bitch stuff. Uh, so lots of PBS. Nothing wrong with uh, PBS, by the way. They have some amazing programming. And it's what eventually led to me making down the rabbit hole. But I didn't have Invaders in when I was growing up. And I tried watching it later and it's like, ah, oh, it's okay. It's clever. I have okay. a friend who was in the same boat that um, I had over the day that I got to watch Enter the Florpus. <laughs> he had a good time. I, I did have Invaders in. And um, <clears throat> man, Enter the Florpus was great seriously great it's it's such fun stuff <laughs> wishbone it was a good time yeah wishbone what's the story wishbone so good 
Shallow she is back. Personas are just JoJo stands. Yep. Bite <laughs> <Peter>. me. <laughs> Peter Melling asks, Fred, what made you pick Albertus for your font? That's actually a funny story. I bought Albertus for my book. And then I just had the font lying around. And it's like, oh, hey, it's not Times New Roman. So I used it as just like the font for everything. And it's like, because I realized, hey, wait a minute, this also sort of works thematically for Down the Rabbit Hole. So I used it. Basically, it's because I it's what I had that wasn't your basic, like in your basic list of Microsoft Word or Sony Vegas. Lou's back. So by the way, Lou is the person who, uh, it, also known as Grace and Glory, she's the one who made the uh, preview image with the poison teapot. <laughs> Would you ever do a down the rabbit hole on the YouTube animation community? It's an interesting legacy. Many artists came from new grounds and it caused some rivalry. That is an interesting story that I might want to cover down the line. Uh, in a similar way that I did the furries. I'd need guides, probably, so that I know where to look, so that I don't miss anything. Um, I've been considering, like, a video on Schmorky, right? But Oh, no. Yeah, a, a nightmare. Um, that, that would be a nightmare. But... It might, I might have to choose between Schmorky and YouTube animation. Zaluconde asks, you guys heard of Stolen Babies? I'm not familiar, I'm guessing that's a band. Because that's when we were talking about music, I think. Uh, love YouTube, yeah, big inspirations we for things I want to try later. I'm, I'm so glad that I can inspire people. And, and by the way, I want to stress, however you enjoy down the rabbit hole, good if you fall asleep to it i'm not offended if like if i can help you like if i have helped you sleep why would i be sad about that right same here yeah same here honestly because i've had geez so many of my comments have been you help me fall asleep or i want you to calm down mm -hmm. or i've accidentally fell asleep watching the video right and it's like it's like great that's a compliment all its own man yeah absolutely it's wonderful uh, but it, it makes me happy that that I can help and that you that and I recognize I actually um, I remember that one time I saw a comment that was like, I turned my phone upside down and listened to your videos like a podcast. And that's when I realized I really need to make sure that these videos work in multiple ways. Um, you need to be able to put it on your TV and watch it. You need to be able to fall asleep to it. You need to be able to list just listen to it as a podcast. Um, I. And so now I craft down the rabbit hole to make sure that it is at the very least enjoyable in all of those circumstances. It's a challenge, but I make it work. Uh, and I have to make some changes to the script sometimes, depending on that. Um, I remember talking with Your Movie Sucks about this. He's like, make it for the people who are going to actually sit down and watch it and don't worry about anyone else. Because, but And that's a very sort of movie approach to it. Um, but I disagree. I, I think that people interact with these pieces of media very differently. Um, and so it only makes sense to cater, like, to cater to as many as you can. Now, there are some kinds of videos where this just does not work. Uh, you're not going to turn your phone upside down and listen to a Freddie Wong video. They could, I, no one ever turned their phone upside down to watch Rocket Jump. That old classic video. But... I can do that, but I can make it accessible to multiple different forms of consumption. So that's what I do. Skeletons I do about and... the same. Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I, just, I do about the same. Yeah. You know, uh, that's that's also one of the reasons that I, I do a lot of uh, describing for videos, even as I show stuff. Because sure, I yeah. do have it in mind now that there's a lot of people who watch me while they do something else or they listen to me or just even even me as I work on videos, I like to watch stuff on the side. So I think about those creators, too, who are making art or working on something. And every once in a while, they'll glance over at the screen. It's like, can I provide an experience that's good even while they're doing that? Yes. OK, then we're all set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, that's something I appreciate about your video. I remember. It took me a long time to really go through your videos because, like, I wanted to sit down and just really appreciate them. But then I realized you make them to just be listened to sometimes. 
Yeah, um, no, and, and I will. That's already same as your stuff, <laughs> right? Yeah, but <laughs> did we do the same thing to each other? Yeah, we 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 do pretty much the same thing. That's so Because I've done it. I've I've had a day. I will confess this. I've had a day where I needed to put away a whole bunch of laundry and do some cleaning, and I just ran your um Emperor Teresa Empress, Empress Teresa, Empress Teresa and other yep. videos. Yeah, and just I marathoned you while I was just cleaning stuff and Aww. putting away laundry. So yeah, that's that's how it's done, man. That's fine. <laughs> Again, never... our lives sort of mirror each other in this almost uncanny way. It's just yeah. so. It's I, I'm not surprised anymore. Nope. <laughs> it's hard to be surprised. <laughs> Skeletons and scarves ask, wasn't Maynard focused on eat the element? The talk talked about, about that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kakaidos Media. Hey, Nick, have you seen Everyman Hybrid, the complete compilation? Seven long videos combining all EMH videos and ARG elements, so you get the story. So you get the entire story. I I think I heard about that's that's an extremely valiant effort. Um, my only my only caveat to that would be I still feel like there are just moments in it where you would need somebody to jump on a microphone. And explain what the hell it is that you're looking at, which is so much of what I try to do with Everyman Hybrid, because yeah. there was just so much stuff where it's like, okay, no one is ever going to get this unless somebody spells it out and puts the pieces together in voice with visuals. Mm -hmm. But if that's working for people, that is excellent. Mm -hmm. By the way, I, I know that we can't respond to everyone in chat, but I'm reading a lot of chat. So I'm, I'm probably seeing it. Uh, let's see. Skeletons and scarves. You know what? I can die happy now. Thank you, Frederick. My, this, I, I think that was the me uh, growling. Uh, those, <laughs> the, the metal tracks. Yeah. Axon Dragonov says, just wanted to say, love your videos. Keep up the good work, Fred. Thanks for inspiring me to write more. I'm so glad. It the Knowing that I can inspire people makes me really, really happy. Bill Powell asks, favorite anime? Steins Gate. Nightblade Fencer asks, any chance for a quick Gertie play on stream? Love your work, Frederick. Enjoy the tea. I am enjoying the tea. I'm so glad you like my work. And this setup is kind of restrictive for the Gertie. It's not exactly ideal. And this chair is really bad for it. I'd have to mess around with it quite a bit. Um, but I might. I might. We'll see. <laughs> Indie bot, give him the GERD, Fred. <laughs> Nightblade Fencer has a few more super chats. 20 pounds. Or not pounds, euros. I'm sorry. Why did I say pounds? 20 euros each. Yeah, Nightblade Fencer has been very generous this whole stream that the name is coming up again and again. Seriously, thank you. Frederick, I've always loved your Down the Rabbit Hole series. How long does it take you to do the research required? Also, what inspired you to begin that series? Um... So I, I told the story of how Down the Rabbit Hole started yesterday, I think. But basically, it the short version is um, I was helping a game studio present a game, and they're like, hey, do you want a community outreach role? And I was like, yeah, do I need to make a video? Like, no, sh should I show you some videos I made? They're like, yes, please. And I was like, fuck, I haven't made a video in years. So I quickly threw together the first Down the Rabbit Hole because I thought it would be a good confluence of my skills. And they never got back to me, but down the rabbit hole accidentally got viewership, so I just rolled with it. That's how down the rabbit hole happened. Oh, I think I did burn myself. Oh, goodness gracious. It's raised. Okay, um, whatever. We're okay. Uh, how long, does, right, the other part of the question was, how long does it take you to do the research? The... It really depends on the video nowadays. The Per Cat Cafe one took very little time uh, because all the information was nice and neat um, and all together. But it, the video took longer because I had to throw out the Grover house uh, before that. That's what ate up a lot of the time, just trying to dig and find whatever I could about it. Uh, research can take anywhere between like a month to three months, depending. Uh, it really, really depends. And a lot of that time is often taken up by me just having to dig through tons of information.
Well, oh no, Ark is saying, oh no, Fred. What's up? Uh, are we okay? People are saying F. F's in chat. Are we okay? Hmm. Did I say something bad? I think it's an F for the burn that you got. Oh, okay. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm fine. It doesn't hurt at all. It's not even, like, it's kind of blistered? What happened? You don't know what, it's what happened? Is it just... Whatever. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Okay. And then Nightblade Fencer has another uh, comment. In regards to storytelling, look at the stories and films made by Wes Anderson. They aren't always the most popular films, but the stories feel timeless. This is in support of the idea that a story should just be well told. Yep. Absolutely. Devin Gallucci says, Speaking of clipping, ever listen to Death... Uh, the band. Ever listen to Death Grips? Their lyrics are fun to dissect. Love you two <laughs> precious boys. I was introduced to Death Grips. I, I enjoy them. Um, I don't listen to them a lot of the time. Um, they're not something that I go to usually. I have to be in the mood for it. But I, like... I was introduced uh, with the Rust video of the person running away from the bear blasting Tachyon. Or like this this pack of bears and like car carnivorous animals as he's blasting uh, Tachyon by the death grips. And he just runs around this person and this other person just watches as these animals chase after him. And he runs away. It, it's beautiful. I just know about the Hey Arthur memes. <laughs> The Hey Arthur memes? Yeah, there was a time period when there were a bunch of Hey Arthur memes mixed with Death Grips. Hmm. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Megan. Hey, it's Atlas. Sup, Atlas. Miss your face. Hope all has been well. You can tell that it's Atlas based on what they're saying. <laughs> on ju just what they're typing. I, I like how recognizable they are. Jake Zonies says, love the content, keep it up. Yeah, it's 50. That that was the person who gave 50. Thank you so much. Goodness gracious. I it's, it's fantastic. I that's something I love, right? Is um people giving like this means I don't have to take sponsors. It's great. Like there there's so much more job security. I can take my time with videos. I can um, I, it feels so much more freeing. I don't have to lick the jackboot of um, these sponsors. Are you implying something? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but it, but on on a practical level, it doesn't work for no, down the is, rabbit it hole so well. It, yeah. it 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 it's it it part in particular doesn't work for down the rabbit. I'm just teasing you, obviously. No, it, defin it definitely I, doesn't. I, I'm I, I'm actually really thankful that there are sponsors out there who are willing to sponsor YouTube videos, and uh, like in exchange for a little bit of runtime, because um, they're helping a lot of YouTubers just exist. It's fantastic. I I personally do not do it because uh, Down the Rabbit Hole has a very independent and like fact oriented vibe, and it just wouldn't work with Down the Rabbit Hole. Part of it is like, hey, you know, there's no outside influence here. Um, and so that's like I'm trying to maintain that uh, for down the rabbit hole, and so far I don't I don't have to like I don't have to take them. It would be very disruptive for down the rabbit yes. hole. Yes, down the rabbit hole in particular, it would be really really bad. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> that, that, I got to read out <laughs> his story to say. <laughs> you have made a powerful enemy. This won't soon be forgotten. <laughs> Your stolen goods are now forfeit. Mm. No, but but I I actually as much as I tease, I do n I I appreciate that sponsors exist and allow more creators to have their voice heard, even if they aren't getting as many views. I I love it. For me, it funds October. It funds October, yes. and it's more security, mm -hmm. and it funds other things that aren't seen that do help with the channel and just getting stuff done overall. Exactly. It's I'm glad that I'm glad that they're part of the ecosystem. Is my point. Yeah. Colin 
Behunian. Behunin. Okay, we can do it. I believe in myself. Call him Behunin. It's me, Norman. I'm Angie. <laughs> <laughs> Royce Axel no, says. Not me, I'm Angie. Angie. Royce Axel says, can we extend the live stream again with Super Chat? <laughs> <laughs> Fuji, Fuji, Fusizen. Sure, we'll go with that. So I had to send a short chat just to let Nick know how much I love his content. One of my favorite YouTubers. Gonna check out Down the Rabbit Hole, too. Hey, cross-pollination. Enjoy, enjoy whatever you find. If you want a good introductory video that's short, Empress Teresa is probably a good one, even though it's one of my early ones. Um, if you want to just dive in head first, Temple OS is probably the one that I would recommend. Uh, it's an hour see, and a half long, I... but it really Time Cube is a shorter way to sort of show sort of show that ev everything that down the rabbit hole is. Like Time Cube is very much the um from fear through the eyes of madness of down the rabbit hole. And it, by that I mean from fear through the eyes of madness is the Coheed and Cambria song that has all of Coheed and Cambria's sounds in one song. Time Cube is the same way. It has all of what makes Down the Rabbit Hole what it is in one video. Yeah, Th thank you for that, and thank you for checking out Fred. I I completely endorse Fred 150. Uh, percent Honestly, for my recommendation, first, um, I would feed somebody the Final Fantasy House <laughs> straight up because it's so right. nuts. It is quite it's confusing, so to the point that I had to make a follow-up <laughs> video to clear up the timeline. Yeah. Uh, and I got another voice. Oh, I got the funniest comment on that video. I remember now. Um, someone said, why, do you why did you use a voice modulator to make your voice deeper? That's cringe. Or something along <laughs> those lines. I'm like, that's literally not me. Like, it's... <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I have him in the credits. His name is in the credits. It's all over the place. It's Duke Loves You. He's the one who did that voice. It's not me. <laughs> I don't know how to make this clearer. How did... Uh, anyway. And, and my, voice is at, my voice is even at the beginning of the video. So you can hear the difference between my voice and his. Why did... <laughs> Anyways. I, it's just... Some people... <laughs> some people, you just... That was such a great object lesson in you can't get the obvious stuff to everyone. You just have to accept that some people are not paying attention. You it's will never so, get the whole room. It's so, yeah, it's it's just funny. Yeah. Kyle Luchsinger. Luchsinger? I think the CH might be a hard CH. Luchsinger. Have you heard of the hit game Raid Shadow Legends? The game Raid that is sweeping Shadow the nation. Legends. The dark fantasy RPG taking the mobile world by storm. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. Don't lie to me. Yeah. <laughs> Nightblade Fencer again with 10 euros. I love your content and enjoy giving you 70% or whatever YouTube takes. <laughs> Keep it up, gentlemen. Sadly, I am not familiar with the guest, but I would love to sub to him as well. Check him out, Nightmind, on YouTube. I can endorse his content. It's good stuff. If Thank you've you, ever sir. been curious about the craft of ARGs, it's a fantastic introduction to understand the craft a little bit more uh, and how it tends to work and some of the language that's common in it. <laughs> the, oh, my God. <laughs> That's the, the only other one I would ever take during Cabin Fever Dreams because I could make the best jokes about shaving as a cat. <laughs> that would be very would, good. They wouldn't they wouldn't allow me. I know they wouldn't. Yeah. I would get shut down so hard. You read it. You read it. Okay, hold on. But first we have five dollars from the Ventus. Thank you very much. And then we have internet historian with 10 Aussie bucks. This live stream was brought to you by Manscaped. With their patented rotary blade, you can ensure a clean shave downstairs while avoiding those nasty cuts and scratches. Use code KNUTZEN for 8.36% off. Because I know that's how... 
you he does that just to j- just to try to get under my skin. You know that, right? And every time Frederick Knut's cure now. Every <laughs> oh, but we just keep getting super chats. Never ending stream. The Australian oh. would know about shaving down under. Oh Aye, I'm funny. <laughs> Oh no. Hannah Els wait Hannah Ashling. I know how to pronounce that name because Ashlyn, it's Ashlyn. Uh Hannah Ashlyn, because Ashlyn was a character in Gigantic. And I got to learn how to pronounce that name. Hannah Ashlyn says, Hi guys, just wanted to let you guys know I'm a huge fan of both your channels and content. Keep up the ASOR work. A awesome work. Okay. Oh, it's because it's being cut off because it's in the wrong you know what? Ace, it, it's because it was cut off. They said awesome. Keep up the awesome work. Enjoy your tea. Thank you so much. I'm I'm just glad that you enjoy it so much. Royce Axel, last live stream you introduced me to Nightmind. Thanks. Yeah, I brought you up yesterday. I'm I'm glad. I'm so glad when I can introduce people to other creators that they enjoy. It's it's nice. They're doing all the work so I can just enjoy the videos. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Powell says, El Sai Kongru. Ah, Steins Gate is so good. The only time that I have truly been engaged by a time travel story, like a time travel plot. Tin, wait. Tin Fomer, wait, I, I feel like I'm missing something. Tin Fomer Kjellman? Dead air. I'm trying. Dairy I'm... air. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Frederick, if there were any serious developments in the topic of one of your videos, would you consider doing anything about it? Uh, I did it with Digital Homicide Studios. Um, and I know that I'm going to have to make update videos for Chris Chan and Darkside Phil. I'm just waiting. Nefarious Gremlin, a.k.a. Gidus, asks, or just says, thank you again for helping to stave off madness. Hopefully I can, I can incite a different kind of madness. Cheers. And I think that's All it. All right. And that's with that, I, I must bid adieu because I realize now my stomach is eating itself. So oh, I must gosh. find sustenance. Okay, go eat... Um, <laughs> We'll end the stream and then um, let me know when you're back so we can chat. Yep. Because I I need really? to show you I need to show you Hai Lung. You are you're I think you're gonna be happy. It's one of the only bands that legitimately has an a woo in their music. <laughs> they literally a woo. In nice. one of theirs. <laughs> um, I'll stick. I might stick around a little bit longer to answer some questions, but I'll let you go. Go eat. Okay. And I'll see you soon. Thank you for having me for tea time, Frederick. Of course. It's it's Lovely a good it's always all. a good time talking with you. I'm It always is. I'll talk to you soon. But yeah. Nick Nick's a good boy. Go check him out on his YouTube channel, Nightmind. If you haven't, if you're interested in ARGs, you may just enjoy what he has to offer. Um he's great. Good boy. He he's a good boy. <laughs> and so are you. Thank you, Fred. Aww. Bye chat. Bye, Nick. <laughs> Later. <laughs> I'll stick around and answer some more questions. We have one more super chat from Royce A- Axel. I'm saving up for 420, but I want this forever rip. Aw. Don't worry. We have three more quarantine streams coming up. Same time. Uh, these are going until Thursday. And someone earlier I, I noticed mentioned that uh, atro- that atrocity guide would be a good person to bring on. Guess who's coming up on Wednesday? <laughs> no, Atrocity Guide, at this point, I, I would call a friend. A good friend. She's she's great. She's fantastic. She's a quality person. I'm recognizing that I'm probably going to have to take a little bit longer to answer all of these super chats that are coming in. I've been drinking a lot of tea. I'll be right back. Just give me one moment. 
we're not we're not done with the stream yet. I'll be right back. I promise. This setup might look a little bit more spacious than it actually is. Goodness gracious. I'm like really locked in here. If there was an intruder, I'd, I'd be dead. Okay. <laughs> Dead air. Dicker, dicker, it's Donga. All right. Yes, I did wash my hands. Thank you very much. Wash your hands, everyone. Actually, even... Even if you're quarantined and you're not going out, you don't want to get sick. Because if you get sick and have to go to the hospital, there's not going to be a bed for you. That's like, I think that's something that people aren't really recognizing about the quarantine. Is like, if, and the pro part of the problem with COVID, it's that, yeah, COVID, you know, we can save a lot of people in the hospital, but each of those beds is one bed that another person who might have another illness that needs treated can't have so even the people even you know people who might not be nearly as at risk for covid like quarantine guys <laughs> even for the people that aren't at risk like what if you like need to go the, to the hospital for something completely unrelated i was quick hackers yeah wash your hands I got <laughs> what did I sing to play out the full 20 seconds? I did a metal growl. <laughs> All right, let's... Yeah, be very careful. Now is a bad time to have to go to the emergency room. Just be careful with yourselves. Especially, Always be a little bit careful with yourselves, but especially right now. Let's see. Let me go. All right, here we go. Gosh, more super chat. Thank you so much, everyone. Really. Daniel Rego says, hey, man, big fan. Love your work. I'm so glad that you like it. Do you have a book to recommend? I have a, a thousand books to recommend. Hmm. If I were to recommend one book, if I were to recommend one book, it would be A Scanner Darkly by Philip K. Dick. It is one of my favorite books of all time. It is a trip. And I mean that it, as a pun as, as well as just meaning it's really good. <laughs> Nightblade Fencer, again. Goodness gracious, man. <laughs> Don't trust Internet Historian. He is a malicious AI trying to destroy us all. Don't worry. I know. 
David Mendez, first time catching this show. What's the wooden Roomba on your desk? <laughs> this is a tea tray. It's pretty cool. It's um, so it's a wood surface on top that is uh, that has stri like not striations. It's got it's just got holes in it basically that um, if you spill a little bit of water or tea or you want to dump what's at the bottom of your cup, you can just dump it in there and then um, and then clean it out later. User not found says thanks for the quality content. Do you think Darkseid Phil created the Wu flu to avoid being evicted after going bankrupt? <laughs> oh my god. God knows what's been growing in his fat folds, so maybe. Colin Behunin, again. Thank you. Says just making the stream a little longer. <laughs> Royce Axel says he can't end the stream if he has to keep reading. <laughs> I will be here forever. Hey, Atrocity Guide's here. What's up? How you doing? Good to see you. And I did see your message. Don't worry. Mm. Yeah, Atrocity Guide's most recent episode was fantastic. Please go and watch it. Uh, where can you get this tea? I'm actually not sure, uh, but the company that makes it is Charities. It's another tea pun. But you should be able to order it. You should be fine. Uh, like, just looking it up. Just Charities. As in, like, T-E-A-S. Charities. Where did I get this cup? I actually, um, funny enough, I got this set when I went to a wine tasting class uh, at a tea convention. Uh, they were giving these out as uh, part of the class. But these are very cheap. <laughs> Lou, Lou uh, is... <laughs> so the thing that Lou is quoting is part of the summary of my book that I'm not proud of anymore. Thank you very much. It, it's not very good. Saying, just beyond the membrane, a part of human consciousness lingers, unknown, with the promise of an infinitely expanded mind. It's, yeah, one of the conceits of that book is that there is an extra-dimensional part of the human mind that exists just like, I call it the membrane, but it's just in that description, but it's basically just in a, a close dimension. Um... In the fourth dimension, we can't actually, like, interact with it. But it's, like, it's there, and the idea is that humanity is, like, there's some sort of strange being, this new god, that is trying to connect people's mind, like, actual minds to their, like, to this other mind. Um, or was he, what was his goal? His, he was trying to control them. He was trying to control that other mind. And then attach and then like reattach them to the humans. It's it's weird. It's <laughs> and it's only really hinted at in the book. Can you make a remix of the down the rabbit hole intro in the song Nookie by Limp Biscuit? <laughs> I mean, I didn't make the song. It's it's Spyglass by Kevin McLeod. Imagine if Frederick and Atrocity got into a collab. Here's the problem with collabs between um like, with my channel. Excuse me? There was a, a bug got in somehow. Anyway. The problem is that collaborations don't necessarily elevate our work. In the end, the time is usually just better spent with each of us making our own individual videos, which is unfortunate. Uh, but it's just a fact of the medium. And there was... No, okay, good. I didn't miss anything. I think, gosh, this stream has gone... This is going to be one of the longest um, quarantines that we've had so far. But I think... I'll just answer a couple more questions and call it. This is a good time to close up. Which It sounds like a ripoff of the concept of soul. Is there... 
like soul as in like a general idea or a is there a narrative called soul because i'm not aware of it i mean it could there's no such thing as an original idea right which down the rabbit hole was my favorite to work on hmm. that's a good question Hmm. I'd have to look at my... You know what? Let me look at my backlog. Come here, my channel. I think... Hmm. It was really fun doing the Final Fantasy house. Rajneeshpuram was also very enjoyable. A lot of, I think the time cube might have been my favorite to research, actually. Of all of them. Oh, God. More super chats. Oh, this will. To quote Blind Guardian, I have found that this will never end. <laughs> this, this will never end. This will never end. Nightblade Fencer. Again. Goodness gracious, man. Careful with yourself. Final super chat from me. I highly recommend the books At Home or 1927 by Bill Bryson. They're fantastic looks into history and how modern life developed from them. I think you'd really enjoy them. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate the recommendations. I really do. Jornelli asks, will you make more videos on game devs or game development? Things like Aussie Historians, No Man's Sky. <laughs> no Man's Sky video and my old Star Citizen video are great. Any possibility of videos like that in the future? Well, there is a particular anime-themed game that I'm peeking into. Bill Powell. Any other creators to recommend? I got a lot of good content from the group you suggested in December. Hmm. Well, obviously, Nightmind. Atrocity Guide is the first channel that I would steer people towards if they enjoy down the rabbit hole it is the most like down the rabbit hole that there is so if you really want more of that kind of content atrocity guide 100 percent um all of her videos are bangers uh night mind obviously uh just had him on rare earth is an unbelievably good web series that i i i feel i always feel a little bit humbled whenever i watch one of his videos it's like oh my goodness so good uh let me think you know what let's go to my sub list uh oh duh summoning salt summoning salt is excellent uh, i recommended him before um quentin reviews t uh, fallen titan series is quite enjoyable uh daniel ebertson he was in here uh a couple of streams ago actually he does uh, a lot of kickstarter related videos that are enjoyable larry bundy jr has some very interesting uh, content. Just looking. Internet historian, obviously. Regular car reviews is extremely enjoyable. Uh, page fire unknown. I also mentioned that in my Twitter list a while ago. Uh, Wang. If you enjoy what I make, you might enjoy Wang. You almost certainly would. Um, Ross's Game Dungeon is an incredible series. Uh, I would highly recommend it. There's just a lot. I could, I could go on and on. There's some great ones. Accursed Farms is what you're going to want to look for if you're looking. Uh, that's the channel name for Ross's stuff. I mean, there there's tons. I could go on and on and on. There's some excellent creators. I also love... Uh, my, my cozy viewing that I will watch over and over is... Um, is Dan Bell's uh, Dead Mall series. I love the Dead Mall series. It's cozy. Arcadius Winther says, I love your gong fu set. Thank you. I, it's the it's not quite a gong fu set. What I really need is a um uh Gaiwan. I really need a Gaiwan. But I'm glad you like it. Always nice to see someone enjoying the ritual involved in a cup of tea. I it's something that helps center me a lot. It's very simple, but it's deliberate. 
it's a very deliberate process. And with every tea, you have to steep it a little bit differently. And every time I steep a tea, I learn a little bit more about um, the method and the process and how to do certain teas. Vince, the, the super chats just keep coming. <laughs> Goodness gracious, you all are crazy. Vintage says, love your videos. Keep up the good work. I'll do my best. I, I really will do my best. Prince Mutum Mutumbu. Meow meow purr. Jean Ray. Cubic. <laughs> <laughs> a guy won. It's, um, it's a cup with a lid that's used for steeping tea. What's my opinion on matcha? I love it. But whenever I make it, it's bitter, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong, and I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Do I watch Turkey Tom? I've watched a couple of his videos, I think. It's been a little bit. What's the device Frederick is using to heat his tea? Um, it's, it's just a kettle. It's a kettle with an uh, electronic temperature control. <laughs> I think that this might be a good time to call it. I got to chat up um, a couple of people, actually, and I have editing to do. I've got work. And yes, I'm following Gino Samuel's uh, documentary series on Chris Cham. I'm almost caught up. I haven't seen the most recent one. It was just, it was released like two days ago. New Ross's game dun dungeon. Is there a new one? That would be amazing. Is there any topic that you would never do for a down the rabbit hole episode? I've discussed this a couple of times. There are a lot of topics that I won't do just because they don't work. But the one that everyone asks me to do that I will probably never do is Onision. Uh, God. God, I I will never do Onision because it I couldn't make it interesting. It would just be... Bad man does bad thing. Bad man does bad thing again. Bad man does another bad thing. Bad man does worse thing. Just over and over and over again. Have I seen Astartes? I've been waiting to binge it. And so for those wondering, oh, new Ross's Game Dungeon today. Ooh, nice. What sources do I use most? Whatever I need. Um, Kiwi Farms has actually been very useful in, in terms of they tend to document a lot. And so at the very least, it's a good starting place for a lot of my topics. Uh, at, at, at the very least. Uh, they were extremely useful um, for Temple OS. I was very thankful that they had so much archived. All right. I think, yep, it's now is time to call it. IndieBot, run before another monster sends you a super chat like you. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you all again tomorrow. We still have three more days of quarantine left and three very interesting guests. I hope that you all have enjoyed it. I certainly have. These streams are really nice to do. See you all tomorrow. Um, if you would like, it, it begins uh, at 1 p.m., Pacific Coast time, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard. And with that, I'm going to call it. I know that there are people talking and asking questions in the chat, but if I don't stop, we're going to be here all night. <laughs> and I've got stuff I do need to get done today. So thank you very much, everyone. If you join again tomorrow, wonderful. I'll see you then. If you don't, that's fine too. I hope you enjoyed the next Down the Rabbit Hole. Good night, everyone.